The button has been pressed. All right. Play some B and D. So previously on uh, Tyranny of Dragons, Barons and Dragons, uh, Barons and Dragons, Tyranny of Dragons, I should say. Uh, what happened? Uh, give me a little recap. Well, the Paris Bay have uh, been on a sort of rescue mission to retrieve a senior member of the Cult of Dragons who wants to live back. They arrived at a wizard's tower that said the sector was being uh, stationed at, and upon finally making their way through a lovely magical maze full of strength uh, strength contests against giants, mad shrubbery and shit, um, we, they finally arrived at the tower, where the senior member gave him a little uh, kind of vague on how to get to him, like where he's going to be, and what they need to get to him. Uh, they were able to enter the tower, and after doing a, a little deducing, they were able to find where how to get to the level of the tower that the wizard or person used to be at. They had a little scuffle with some cult uh, cultists, which they dispatched of easily, and found the key that they needed. And then we're about to head off to where the the one cultist said he was going to be. Yeah. Oh, and, and then during that time, Kriven Laden sort of hatched a plan on how to make Kriv a special maul of his own. A Pyramal-esque weapon. Yes. And Kribus was... A So, I mean, he is over a thousand years old. So, um, so you t took the uh, hourglass type key, pressed it against the hourglass sigiled button, and you were all teleported somewhere. Teleported. Yeah, and just a reminder: um, before we teleported, I cast armor bag of this one. Yeah, did you did anybody else have any preparation before you teleported? No. Okay. Cool. So you teleport into a chamber. Um uh, you find three dead cultists here. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Should they look like freshly dead or have they been dead for a bit? Uh give me a medicine check. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they're dead. Uh, hard to tell on how they died necessarily, but you do see a trail of blood leading out of the room this way. Follow it. Actually, hold on. Let me. I'm gonna do a little update to something because uh, somebody is now on the computer instead of on the thing. I'm going to. Talking about me, I've always been on your computer from now on. Wow. So when you teleported in the room, some lamps lit up. Okay. Can we tell how these people oh, died? Oh. Oh. Oh, hello there. There we go. Hello there, my lovely. Now I got some dynamic lighting. Did you say you were about to die? <laughs> oh, I got this. I got something special. If this is what I think it is, I got something special for this. Yeah, I got glaive. Thing I came. Oh no, I I am willing to use one of my pack slots for this. Yeah. So you turn, you you turn the corner and you notice. Uh, for some reason, there's a uh, marker on your love. I don't 
remember why, but he doesn't have one. Um, you look down. Down, you look down the hall and you see uh, a, a fiery humanoid uh, creature just kind of hanging out. Do I recognize this type of creature? <laughs> yeah, you'd probably be able to tell it's a fire elemental. <laughs> Uh, roll me a medicine check. So two of them died uh, because of some sort of magical force. Um, you know, magic missiles or, or some sets. Uh, you do see that the, the third one was stabbed to death. And that that's... And then there's a trail of blood that runs out into towards that fire elemental. I don't see a fire elemental. Um, if he comes to uh, stand where we are, you'll see it. Ah, that fire elemental. Okay. That uh, fire elemental. Do Do we want a quick, a possible quick dispatch of this thing, or do we want to go through the motions of possibly fighting this? Oh, we can take it on. Oh my, it's up to you. I I can quickly dispatch of this. I, I understand. Do you think you're going to need your slots later? I can regain the slots real quick because of my uh, Rod of the Pack Keeper. Go on then. Okay, Have so uh, first off, what is the elemental doing? Just standing he's there. Sipping a coffee. <laughs> Clearly at a table. <laughs> Sorry, when I didn't hear you. He's just standing there. He doesn't look like he's having an, any aggression towards you. Well, we can just approach, and if he gets aggressive, we deal yeah, with him. Can, yeah. Okay. Let's. Yeah, let's do that. Just see what happens. So we're gonna come up to him. All right. Stop there. there. All right, I need you all to roam the initiative. Sure. Fine by me. <laughs> Definitely fine by me. Uh, and and uh, I, I'm assuming Zedra Lava and Kethrick are right behind you guys. No, I'm not. I'm staying exactly where I stayed. I didn't move yeah. for a reason. All right. <laughs> well, Zedra Lava's coming up because, you know, if anybody needs healing. <laughs> well, where's the advantage coming from? Has advantage because of because of his class, and I have an advantage because of the circlet. Okay, checking. And I just have advantage. No, my bad. It's not his class. It's the warning daggers. Oh, I gotcha. I don't remember why I have advantage. Are uh, your rogue right? We we talked about it last time, and I forgot why. Uh, might say in your features and traits. If look, scouts. Actually, it might actually show. Uh, when. Yeah, level thirteen advantage on initiative for the scouts. Well, that doesn't tell me the tell us the ability that's causing that. Oh, well, sorry. Advantage. Oh, ambush master. You have yeah. advantage on it. And the creature you're going to hit, we have advantage against this creature until the start of your next turn, which is awesome. It's like putting a big target on someone like, yeah, you got to get hit. Well, that's after he hits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, on initiative rolls and attack rolls against the first creature you hit during the first round of combat. So oh, those look pretty. If I don't hit him. During this round, that advantage goes away. Right. You're, you're totally right. I mean, I mean it's called ambush. So. I yeah, still I like it. All right. Uh, and I should probably pop these up soon. Uh, ah, yeah. 
you also notice to the south that uh, there's two uh, uh, earth elementals. I thought those were nice stone tables. I can't take care of all of them. <laughs> it's okay, I can take care of all of them. Your cockiness is... Actually, actually <laughs> I can take care of two of them. Does you offer cast it automatically? Yep. That's pretty neat. At fifth level, I can target two creatures. Yeah. There we go. And each spell level after that is an additional creature. I got eaten by goddamn mosquitoes. Boy! I don't see outside. What's boy doing? Um. What is gonna go here? It's gonna go there. He's going to attack this one. Um, yeah, where is the sheep? There it is. You can ignore the uh, the sneak attack since he doesn't do it. So nine piercing damage. And does the twenty five hit? And it doesn't do the acid. The acid, yes, not the sneak attack. So yeah, I forgot. Right, that. right. So a total ten. Yeah, my bad. Remember, give him time. All right, uh, go ahead and roll damage. That definitely hits. Fourteen, but it's the second one is poison. I just cannot change it in the sheet. Okay. Oh. Awesome. And that's his turn. Boy takes six uh, points of fire damage. Alright. Catherick. Um, you see fire on Montel, that's all you know. Yeah. I'm not sure if they communicated that there's earth elementals in there or not. It hasn't been my turn yet. Yeah. Um, if I shot, would I shoot either my teammate? No, I always say that they do not provide cover. <laughs> and you get a clear shot. <laughs> Enough archer that you don't hit us. I'm gonna shoot the fire elemental. The old ranger training still kicks in. <laughs> um, and because of the ambush thing, I have advantage. Anyway, yep. So it'll be 29. Neither one of those were crit. Yeah, but they both hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The both way to hit, so. Uh, 10 piercing, 4 lightning, 25 sneak attack. 10, 4, 3, 5. Nice arrow shot. Yeah, this is my turn. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I'll move up. Hey, Squall! Alright, so seeing these people here, I am gonna cast Banishment. So I need Chris to save me throws from them. Okay, what's DC? 20. Hmm, what is the other gonna happen? Bye bye. Yeah. Um, boom, 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 boom. Now you just need to make sure. Yeah, that's nothing true. Happens, nothing happens to me with the next minute. They, because uh, they're from a different plane. Yeah. 
they stay there. I just want to get banishment. Sorry, I get the work. Here, let me. I can. Um, there. Since I had it up. Okay, cool. So you just need to make sure you don't lose concentration. Yes. All right. Anything else? Probably not. Just just run away. <laughs> no care of two elementals. I can't get touched for a minute. <laughs> just protect me for a minute. <laughs> just one minute. Yeah, because I don't have warcasters, so I don't even have advantage on this. It's okay. Give me twelve seconds. <laughs> hey, one spell to care of two creatures. You're yeah. welcome. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, elementals. Banishment. All right. So, fire elemental moves here. Uh, boy takes, uh, one point of, uh, fire damage, and he is currently on fire. Five. Did it get hot in here? Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Sub there. Okay, go ahead. I have my attack. Mm, Sentinel, right? And I have advantage. Why do you have advantage? Because key trick hit. That didn't explain why you had advantage? Uh, okay, is ability of the rogue scouts. When he hits on the first turn, everyone has advantage on that creature. Until no, only he has only he has advantage on the creature. You against the target have advantage you, until the start of your next turn. You, you have advantage on initiative rolls and attack rolls against the first creature you hit during the first round of combat. You have it. Not your entire party has it. No. In any case, you hit. Yeah, but like, just... <laughs> yes. It, I'm, I'm reading it right here. You have advantage on initiative rolls. In addition, the first creature you hit during the first round of combat comes easier for you. Oh, and others to strike. Okay, the the short version of this is not giving the full thing. Okay. Anyways, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> the first one hit in any case. Yeah. Yeah. So it stops because you got Sentinel. Yeah. So oh, that damage. All right. I'm like, where are you going? All right. Looking thin. Right. Running out of fuel. All right. Yeah, it's dead. <laughs> Gone. Yeah, that, that's a crit. Yeah, for 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 fire mental, that's seven health. How much? Oof. Here we go. Hold on. Alright, bring the others. Back up. Um, uh, hold on. Yeah, boy is going to... Boy takes 10 points of fire damage. Yeah, he's going to extinguish himself. Okay. He still takes 10 points of fire damage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, 
<laughs> pet, pet, pet. Stop, drop, girl. My um, rod of the path keeper, and to gain that spell slot back. So, boy is just going to come and season the love and be like, "My hand hurts." Yeah, uh, what's his hit points at? He has like minus seventeen. He has minus 17? He's He's dead? Yes. No. He has... Give me a second. (laughs) He doesn't have minus 17. What is his normal hit points? And if he only took 7 points of damage... He's at 56 on 94, actually. Oh, okay. Give me the appropriate amount, please. This hurts. (laughs) Uh, Hold on. Um, Yeah. Other than what I know now, um, sure you can add them to your sheet. Thank you. <laughs> I was just thinking, do I just magically just forget? You just how forget to things. Languages? <laughs> you forget how to speak certain things. You forgot how to speak Spanish. <laughs> Quell will just walk in there and be like, ah, that, that, that was a good one. Oh. How do I speak? Okay. Again? Great job. Speak simply. Okay, a few things. Okay. Four. Um, on D&D Beyond, it's uh, at the bottom, proficiency in language, if you want to change it. Yeah, where it says, uh, under your proficiencies, if you click on languages, it will give you the option to add stuff. So you choose an option, language, and then existing, and just add those. Um, Boy gets 11 hit points. I love having a 20 spell DC. Uh, uh, does this include that he's a um, uh, life cleric or not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Should at least. 1d8 plus 8 plus 3. Yeah. No, 1d8 plus 8. Oh. He rolled a 3. Oh, he rolled a 3 plus 8. At least you can be beyond should be adding the link. or um, beyond twenty. No, I think D and D Beyond does it. Yeah, D and D yeah. yeah. produces what it says. Yeah, no, no I, I'm talking about Beyond Twenty, the extension. I think Beyond Twenty uh, did like process that information if it parsed that. There was there was a life cleric, but then D and D Beyond provides the functionality, so they took it out. So everything should be hunky dory. Um. He has extra cure wounds because of the mantle. You're familiar? Yeah, right. Agnes? Okay. What are you doing? Um, I was just going to have Rex, uh, while we're all here and stuff, and make sure that mi- full minute passes and everything to make sure those other two don't pa- come by back. Um, I was going to have Ragnus scout a little bit. Okay. Uh, first off, let me let me talk about the, the this room. As there is a description. Blood streaks the floor here, including this mirrored trail leading back to the teleport chamber, and a second trail of blood, uh, bo- bloody, bo- yeah, bloody boot prints, uh, heading up the corridor to the north. 
They need a mid the gore are three humanoid fingers, blah blah blah, two that look like pistachio statues of clay and stone, and one appearing as a humanoid made of fl flight. That was the description. I'm just gonna use Layden's little token right now for it. Okay. Can we go now? Here. Uh you want me to scout out ahead? Um if you want so. Alright. Uh, so you're not going to search the room? Okay. Well, I'm. They can search while I scout. Okay. So I'm just searching as much as I can. I'm going to sit in this, this is a chair here. I'm going to sit down. Okay. So searching is not my forte, so. And then. Oh. Let me let me make sure it, uh, this says vision. I guess. I guess we can we can just like find come back here when we find the guy oh gonna have reckon scout here um just door are you doing your phasing out thing not not phasing out but uh viewing through ragnus yeah okay so what happens with what happens when when you do this Look at me, my eyes actually start, um, they're, they're white, but, um, flames start kind of coming out. Like, Ifrit from, uh, American Gods? Yes, I've seen it, but I cannot see your eyes. Yeah, it's just that, like, only when I'm viewing through him, it's through my eyes, I actually start to flame. And also, I'm just, like... And I, I can't hear you guys, I can't see y'all, but I can still tell. Oh my god, Grindelof is on fire. <laughs> oh, Hit it. Man. Hit it. Still feel things. Smack it down. Uh, um, while he's doing that, could I, like, look around uh, this room? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me first describe what uh, Regnus is seeing. So he's flying down a uh, hallway, steps this into a, a walkway that appears to stretch across infinite space. Thousands of stars twinkle in unfamiliar constellations, and meteors streak through the vessels above and below the path. Just past the base of the stairs, a door framed by nothingness rises from the path. Fifty feet beyond that, the path meets an intersection with another door straight ahead. Uh, whatever Wynn says, I respond. I, I say back. Just gonna have to jump. Just gonna put... Just gonna Whoa, that walkway looks really weird. There's, like, lots of stars. There's this, like, door, which is, like, just, like, there. <laughs> that leads to, like, an intersection where there's another door. Probably gonna see Catholic just doing just that thing that people do. See if you can hear me. Waving your hands, making faces. No, not making faces. He doesn't have the charisma for that. <laughs> doesn't have to be. What did you tell him to do? I would have told, like, once he got to the end of this corridor, come back. Okay. So. All right. Come back, and then he'll once he sits, he'll sit on my so uh, my shoulder, and then my eyes go back to normal. Goes uh, large. So we got a large round table, with four chairs, sits in one corner of the room with shelves in. Uh, workbenches arranged along the walls. The books and papers are scattered on the table, along with a wooden chest about the size of a shoebox. In the room that we are currently? Yes. Are you, as in case, are you doing that thing in front of my face? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll just say, 
what are you doing? As, as soon as the flames go away, I, I just like back, back up. Uh, roll me a sleight of hand check. All right, what's it, Squall? What's your passive perception? A lot lower than that. Okay, so he, yeah, so, so, so he was doing that, and he saw the flames go away, and he just kind of like, <laughs> he never actually saw that. Well, you saw he was, he was, he was like waving his hand in front of uh, Squall's face while he was in his trance. Then Ragnus comes back, lands on his shoulder, and then. Just as the flames go away, he quickly moves his hand away and just acts as if he was just standing there. <laughs> Question though, wouldn't I see, like, wouldn't Squall, uh, Ragnus see it? Actually, yes. Ragnus would probably have seen it. <laughs> so they was just like, even though, like, it was like, why were you waving your hand in front of my face? Uh, what? That, that was so obstructive. <laughs> Dude. I, I saw it through a dragon. Kether just turns around. Kether, hey, here, oh, hold on. Uh, Ketherick, um, would you have, uh, uh, let's see. If you were perceived that Ragnus was coming back and about to, tur uh, about to turn the corner because, you know, flapping the wings or what have you, um, would you have stopped before Ragnus appeared? Around the corner. If I knew that uh, that's how that worked, like uh, he was viewing through the dragon's eyes, then yes. But do you think Catcher would have known that? Can I roll an Arcana check? Yeah, sure. No, you had no idea how this spell works. You know, you see the familiar go off, but you you, you don't know that's what he's looking through. So, yeah. So Squall would have seen you okay. uh, through Ragnus. It, it's okay. Like, uh, if you didn't know, but he, he's not, he's not dealing with this. He can't just see turns when... around and finds the chest that... It's just on the table. <laughs> He's just like, oh, look, a chest. <laughs> look at this box. Okay, don't want to talk about it. All right. Oh, look, something okay. else to do. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, look at the chest. Like, try to, uh, um, look to see if there's, like, if there's anything hinky about the chest. I'd say... Simply out of panic, he wouldn't check if there's something. No, I I want to check. Okay. okay. I want to check if there's anything hinky about this chest. Sure. Uh, roll me investigation, yeah. Uh, Fourteen. Uh, it's locked. Yeah, you pick it up, you kind of shake it, and try to open the lid, but it's locked. Do you guys need help? Nope. I am. I mean, if you want to, I can unlock it, or or uh, Kester has the key. I'm pretty sure key trick is going to open this lock. I, I can try. I believe in you, Rick. I roll me a three thieves full check. Uh, dexterity plus proficiency, because you're proficient. Can can boy help with encouragement? Yeah, sure. Kethrick hasn't really been at this, so Keth, uh, so boy could be like over his shoulder, like giving him tips. But do you feel the tumbler? It's just like right there. We can do it with advantage. Yeah. So basically, anything that if you have anything that's dexterity with proficiency, just go ahead and roll that. Yeah, there is a way to add custom skills for like your thieves tools. What do I roll? 
any your, dex skills. Any dex skills that you're proficient with, because you're also proficient with thieves tools. So probably maybe I like just slide of hand. There we go. Yeah, you see, so you get in there and you're like, "Boy, I got this," and it unlocks. Uh, you find that three scrolls in there. I push the chest over to scroll. <laughs> I'll, I'll look at this, the scrolls. Uh, you have two scrolls of protection against fire elementals and one scroll of protection against earth elementals. Convenient. Are they still around, by the way? Like, yeah. I, um, mm. the, the Earth Elementals, I banished back to their um, native plane, and the Fire Elemental died. Okay. And you, you dissipated, you extinguished the uh, Fire Elemental. Yeah, so if you mention that you have a scroll of Earth Elementals, be like, oh, we don't need that now. <laughs> He's like, yeah, like what? Like candy beforehand, but took care of those then. And then it's like, Keith would be like that. I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that was, you were back there. There's two Earth Elementals here, but just sent them home. Pretty much. Alright, so there is a door over here, guys, and then there is a bunch of, like, a couple doors and another hallway down here. I didn't have Ragnus go too far. Okay, to, like, do we go? I, 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 so, like, I'll, I'll tell everyone, like, I can see through him, like, just so everyone understands how this works. I can see through him for up to a mile away, but I can only communicate with him for about 100 feet. Frederica, Frederica, as uh, you and Boy start uh, walking towards the hall hallway, Boy just suddenly stops for a second. Okay, I'll tell them. By the way, um, uh, apparently, Layden says that Bahamut says, well, Kremis said that Layden said that Bahamut said that he's borrowing Cyrus. That's why, why he vanished. I, I don't know. That's all they said. Good for him. Good for him. Let's be positive about this. Take our best wizard, but be positive. It's great. I don't know. Just for some reason. I don't know. Maybe Layden want, wanted his pops to, to send me the message because I'm his brother. but Or something like that. I don't know. But I, I just suddenly had this message pop my head and I had to stop and like Listen, that's why it stopped. So it's okay. Mama can cast spells too. Okay. Do you want me to see cast? Do you want to see me cast fist? Well, oh, not really. It's I mean, well, not on me at least. Yeah. No, not on you. Okay, good. Uh, I knew you weren't that type of mama. Um. Okay. First door. How do we continue down the hall? Uh, I just <laughs> I have a bit of coffee. I'd, I'd say first door. First door it is. Cue in uh, somebody once told me the the Shrek music and then just kick in the door. Uh, before you do, boy, boy reaches over to the, to the handle and just opens the door. <laughs> it just helps the dramatic. There you go. Oh, wait a minute. You were trying to dramatically enter? Oh, sorry about that, Mom. Yeah, let me close the door again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to kick it down? I could close it. It's... I wonder why characters never socialize with teachers. <laughs> Do you want to... <laughs> Do you want to kick it down the door? That's what's good. Okay, go ahead and roll me the athletics check. Yes. 
let's destroy this door. I don't have advantage though, so no, it doesn't matter. Uh, so you, you kick the door and it cracks a little. <laughs> Mom, let's just open the door. <laughs> I know it was... Uh... It's a... It's obvious gla gl at a glance, this area is once a wizard's workroom. Uh, work tables are covered with notes, uh, alchemical flasks, uh, beakers, brazers, and other arcane apparati. Or apparatus, it says, it says in here, but I'd like to say apparati because I think an, it's an N apparatus. So multiple, it would probably have to be apparati, but that's beside the point. More startling is the whirlwind occupying the center of the room, uh, 10 feet across and, and uh, stretching from floor to ceiling. It swirls endlessly, revealing a number of sparkling gems within. Um, so, wait a minute. How, how long is this? 10 feet across? 10 feet across. So I'm going to say... Let me draw it. I'm surprised they didn't like put it on the map, uh, but that's okay. Uh, and it's old alt for circle. But I'm just gonna say that it was like right here. A whirlwind. Yeah, a whirlwind is occupying part of the room. 10 feet across and stretching from floor to ceiling. It swirls endlessly, revealing a number of sparkling gems within. Ooh, those are pretty. What are these, these things? What things? The bookshelves? Brown? Okay, bookshelves. Or lab desktops. Work tables are uh, so it's work tables are covered with with notes, al alchemical flasks, beakers, brazers, and other arcane apparatus. Well, I think we all know what to do about that. I would know about those. Are they potions uh, still remaining? Mm. I know potions. You don't see anything that would be like a completed potion. Like you could probably see some ingredients for potions, but Yoinks. no actual completed potions. Yoinks the ingredients. Sure. You you could basically determine that the equipment here is now useless, and any reagents and components have long since dried up, decayed, or lost their potency. Open whirlwind. There's nothing like no barrier. Yeah, it's just an open whirlwind with some gems spinning around in it. Um, do you, do you examine the notes that are there? there? There's some notes on the table. Yeah, I tried to take gems. You're gonna try to take gems? Just yeah. hold on, hold on. Let me read these notes. Let me read these notes. Okay, roll me in your candle check. If you don't understand them, if you don't understand them, just bring so them to me. you figure out that apparently Zonthal, the the per, the wizard that the tower is named after, was apparently experimenting, um, was making a complex attempt to create elementals that fuse the best traits of earth, air, fire, and water. And when you look at the gems, the gems look familiar. Like a topaz, an amethyst, a pearl. Is there a sapphire missing by any chance? Uh, hold on. Pick them. Uh, yeah, you probably see, you see blue sapphires, uh, yellow diamonds, red uh, corundum, and uh, you see some emeralds. That sounds lovely to take. Those are probably elemental gems. Um, is there a rock anywhere? Not really. Like a pebble. Um, I guess step back. I'm just gonna take some hey, uh, gems over there. 
take some of them pearls that I have. I have 11 of them. Check it into the whirlwind. Cool. Roll me a d4. See what happens. Four. Four. One, two, three, four. So. Keep it around. Just. Uh, do, 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 no, no, that's not what I want. I want that. Alright. And get rid of that. That. Uh, so an emerald comes flying out of the, uh, out of the, uh, whirlwind. And, uh, shatters on the floor. I need everybody to roll me initiative. There was probably a limit amount of. Oh, I forgot to click on my token because I'm that good. Oh, that's right. We're going by milestone. Oh no. <laughs> XP farm is useless. I can take care of this again. You don't need to. Just saying. Uh, so like, right. save your, save your Andrew, you might need it at some point. Okay, um, or like we take like an hour and just like. And that, and Zidralov's like, why did you do that? Curiosity. Okay. Do you know what curiosity does? does you know what they say about curiosity? And the cat. Anyways. I mean, you got a point there. Be like, save the mouse? Well, you're not the mouse. <laughs> hey, it doesn't like really banishment. Like, uh, I have like a time thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm not, in, I don't lose concentration within a minute after casting it. The it it's it stays. So, like, if I use banishment on it and I maintain concentration on the spell for a minute it will stay in its plane because it's a it's a, a, a um, other plane creature right elementals are from the elemental plane of fill in the blank so like probably after that minute it just even stays. if you lose concentration it yeah it it stays oh, yeah it's after a minute it's permanent as long as, as long as it's native to another plane yeah. If not, it pops back. Yeah. After that minute, it'll pop back if it's native to the material, the prime material plane. And not all elementals are native from the elemental planes. Same for fairies and like, fey creatures and uh, undeads. Not all from the shadow pal. And I didn't know about that part. I just said, yeah. The more we know. Do -do 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 -do. You want me to play uh, my turn? Yeah, go ahead. This boy doing. I mean, there's an elemental right next to him, so. Yeah, he's gonna be annoyed. Go there and uh, attack with advantage. I guess twenty-seven hits. Oh yeah. So um, thirty, forty damage. For the first attack. Okay. And second attack. Oh, that crit is gonna be nice. Do you ever just stop to wonder? Is this a good elemental? Um uh no because uh your DM said that roll uh, yeah. roll for initiative, so, so Oh wow, look at this crit, uh, that, that sneak attack, all these sixes. Oh. But the sneak attack isn't on the second one, right? It's only on one, one attack, right? I know, but look at all these sixes. Too bad. So sad. Yeah. Um, so first, the three is acid, but the seven is poison, if it, if it changes something. The se oh. It does. Thank you. Okay. Was pretty sure for the 
the acid. Not sure for the poison. Oh, yeah, that's it. Oh! I'm like, look, mama, my hand passes through. <laughs> I gotta read all these resistances, man. All right. Catherick. I'll say right now, if you want to, you can shoot through the whirlwind. But it's kind of in the way. So you would have to reposition if you did not want to do that. Pretty fast. Like, whew. um, oh, don't want to meta. Try not to meta. Try not to meta. Um, okay, so I mean, you did see Squall just throw a pearl into the whirlwind, and then one of the gems went flying out. Hmm. Yeah, you go through the wall. Uh, no, that's ten feet. That's five feet. Fuck. Nope. What about right here? Yeah, you could probably probably get a clear shot from there. All right. Ah. Bad thing. Cool. Water elemental. Yeah. Going whoosh whoosh. Ooh, lightning? It's like... Yeah, what about it? It, lightning or... it? it didn't seem the lightning did any extra damage or anything. It didn't do less damage. And with the slash of the the storm glaive, dissipate the water elemental. So I'm just gonna grab a gem in the whirlwind. All right, roll me a d4. Yes. Are, are you throwing another one? No, I'm nope. trying to grab one of the. Now, roll me a acrobatics check. Yes, yes, acrobatics. Mm -hmm. Mighty, mighty acrobatics. Actually, no. Tell me, tell me if it's different or or not. It would actually be a sleight of hand check. It's probably a sleight of hand. And it okay. doesn't differ. It's not different. But I roll okay. Is it, yeah. If it if it's not different, then I would stick with the this roll because it's essentially the same thing. Yeah. Uh, however, you don't have advantage. No, <laughs> that's no, a ten. <laughs> that's a ten. Cool. Uh, you do not manage to grab one. However, um, one goes flying out, and it's not even next to where the one was before. And do that. Uh, and the uh, it is a what was it yellow diamond, and out pops that in Earth Elemental. Is it still my turn? Uh. Yeah, we'll we'll just well 
it took an action to reach into it. So, okay. so I would say say this was all that you do one slash and you're like, oh, okay, reach in, and out popped another one. So we kind of I'm going to use the water elementals initiative. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to have it on here just so we have the initiative. And just continue from there. So you do that, and out pops a, an earth elemental. It goes raw. And turns to boy. Because it's the closest one. And does two slam attacks uh, against boy. I'm going to attack it since it attacks another creature. Okay. Does an 18 hit boy? Meets it, be meets it beats. Okay, so he takes 18 bludgeoning damage. That hurts, he's got a half of it. Okay, he dodge! Yes. So nice. Alright. And that's its turn. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute, hold on. Uh... It takes 29 slashing magic and 11 thunder damage. Yep, got it. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. Oh, hold yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. There we are. Okay, I fixed it. What happened? Um... Let's just say it's not happy. <laughs> uh, you see it kind of like make like a squat, but nothing happens. And, uh, and just growls. Squall. Nurse Elemental appeared after Frederica reached her hand into the whirlwind. Nope. My plaything. We're gonna stop dealing with this and continue on. Obviously, this isn't working. We tried twice and failed twice. Well, I, I'm just unable to grasp it. I, I don't have that dexterity. Either key trick or boy are probably more suited for that thing. If it's acrobatics, I'm pretty good at that too. But no, it's probably sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. Sleight of hand, huh? So, boy, do I'm you want to play? Trying to catch it. Okay, boy, do you want to play catch the rock? Roll me an insight check for boy. Um, Mama, I think even if I could reach in there and grab one, another would pop out and there would be another elemental out here. Maybe if we just left it alone. You might be right. Then let's go. A minute later, you're ready to move on. <laughs> It was uh, another work table which has notes and alchemical flash beakers, brazers, and other arcane apparatus. Did Squall look at them? Sure. Well, no, there's there's nothing about the whirlwind specifically. The whirlwind might you, you could probably deduce deduce that the whirlwind was this whirlwind. Because of all these different gems, this was probably part of his experiment. Yeah. In the all right, let's go. We have a door on the right. Do we open it? Yeah. All right. 
care to do care to do it? Either Keytrick or maybe Keytrick you should stand behind me. Rude. Uh, he didn't say that out loud, so. <laughs> yeah, I still have eighteen <laughs> passive perception. Dude, he said he didn't say it, say it out loud. <laughs> 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 that whisper was. Have 18 doesn't mean you can't hear it. Yeah. You can't read his thoughts. Oh, it was in your head. Oh, my bad. Yeah, he said you didn't <laughs> say it out loud. Like you didn't. No, no. It. I, I, yeah, in my head it was like I just whispered it. So like, um, you're probably gonna have a clear shot in the room if you. Anyway. Open. Uh, before you do that, I need everybody to make me a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. Yay, dex saves. Aren't we glad to have those? Not bad. Look at this deck save. Mm -hmm. That's five. Mm. Oh, Zindelow. I see what you're doing there. Editor all walking along the path, all of a sudden. A swarm of tiny meteors come pelting, and pelting you. Boy, uh, Squall and Ketherick easily dodge out of the way, but Frederica, you and Zindralov go flying off the the uh, the stairs into the infinite abyss. What? Where are we going? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you, you fall off into the stars. Oh, uh, okay. Because uh, remember, the steps ascend to a walkway that appears to stretch across infinite space. Thousands of stars twinkle in unfamiliar constellations and meteor. They streak across the vast of the sky. Apparently, the meteors are real. Uh, also, uh, you and Zindralov take uh, three points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, Zen, Zen, and Frederica, those who failed the dexterity saving throw. I didn't fail. I rolled a two. All right, I need you to roll me a d4. Yes. Four. 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 Uh, are you trying to do a reaction? Well, I see that they're falling. Mm hmm So... Once they're they just that, going further and further away. How far away are they? Like, once they like, see, like, realize that they fell off, then, like, gauge how far away they are. Let's say this. Um, from my understanding, gravity is considered going 60 feet around. Yeah. Can I try to reach Zinderlove? I don't know, making a swim check. Um, no. Okay. Can't, can't really swim through the air. Okay, can I, can I throw, like, a rope at him? You know, do a for here, too. Oh, hey. Um, don't worry about that. Why they get moving there? Uh, you all, you suddenly materialize in this room, and you uh, fall to the floor, taking uh, twelve bludgeoning damage. Ouch! Falling damage. Well, good thing I had that temporary hit point. No, it's uh, me and Zen. Well, I got moved up here. Oh, I didn't mean to move you. I actually, I was trying to grab both of them, so you didn't move. You stayed on the platform. So it's you, Boy, and Catholic. You have no idea where Zinderlov and uh, Frederica are. Oh, no. I mean, he's, he's pretty safe. No worry. Do Zinderlov and 
Gloves and Frederick could say anything. Well, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna ask. I'm, I'm gonna check where we are. Like, where is around us? Uh, hold on. I get description for. Uh, this area is lined with shelves holding hundreds of mundane and and exotic reagents and components. Although it looks like a lot of the supplies have been either evaporated, congealed, or decayed over long years. Well, that seems like a storeroom. And even if most of it is not in good shape, probably some of it is still. Um, yep. Pick it up. Basically, you can replenish material components. Cool. Not like expensive material components, but... Oh, there's no diamond. Um, I mean, I don't. I don't think we really need um, diamonds. No diamonds because I have. I still have four thousand seven hundred gold gold worth of diamonds, and he he pads his his, his bag of holding. Yeah, you're good. We should have no problem then. Hey. Um. Yeah. Okay. I uh, off the off the walkway. That entire walkway is open to empty space. There's no there's no railings or anything. It's just a flat stone walkway above nothing. Well, above a field of stars. We trip a trap or something? Can I check for like a trap that we might have tripped on? Uh, go ahead and uh, give me another dexterity saving throw since you asked that. In fact, Squall and Boy should make another dexterity saving throw as well. As meteors, as another flock of meteors come flying through, you all are able to easily dodge. So, um, keep moving. Yeah, is the door. Is there a door that we see? Yeah, there's a door right there. Oh, I'm just gonna open the, the the door. And you see Squall. Oh, hi. Um, uh, Squall, yeah. As you walk it, are, are walking, continuing down the walkway, uh, you see the door open, and there's Frederica and Zindrolov. I'll turn back and be like, "They're over here." Let's just Mama. Quick. Let's go. Open this door. All right. Apparently, I'm not good with meteors. With comets. I'm alone in my hallway. You can. You should be able to just like move through the doorway. So, if not, I can move you through the doorway. Everybody's over here. So, are you are you not following them through the doorway on the stairs? On the stairs? Okay. If Frederica went first, I would not. Yeah, she went. She went first. Yeah, I did. Are you going to stay on the walkway then? I mean, I was waiting for everyone to like get together. Um, but if everyone's here, then. It's Sorry, I'm chowing down on check things. This circular room is obviously a library or study. Its walls lined with bookshelves that extend from the floor to the gently domed ceiling 20 feet overhead. The wheeled ladder is connected to a rail that runs around the curved wall, allowing access to the upper shelves. A delicate, ornate desk stands at the center of the room, surrounded by piles of blank paper. A large map sits on the desk, its corners held down with stones. I'm gonna I'm gonna check in like in the room if there's something. I'm gonna look at the bookshelves, see if there's anything interesting. Yeah, check if you if there's interesting books for uh 
Cyrus. All Cyrus and uh, Lemon. I'll check on Grimlock. Okay. Yeah, I'm buying. I mean, I wouldn't verbally say it. It's just like look. Let's get a good look over on him. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm fine mm. too. I hope you don't take any of this personally. Kevin is just really afraid of. Of, of course not. Frederica is taking it personal. Uh, like, I don't, don't blame her. I haven't yeah. this one yet. Why is he so afraid of me? You see, you see a lot of books about like elementals, elements. The elements and a lot about elemental magic. That's about well, it. I'll, I'll take whatever seems interesting. Enough, well, like <laughs> the elemental magic. Um, well, let's say six books. Okay. Boy is like, oh, I spot with my thieves' eyes. These are Lemon's favorite books now. You you do find uh, there are at least four books there that uh, deal with each individual elemental plane. All right. But find like a bestiary. Let's just eat all the books in the bag. There's a lot of stuff in this bag already, so let's let's try to. I was talking about my bag, but sure. Oh. So four books of elemental planes, one uh, book, elemental magic. Um. How many other books do we find? All right. Let me. Let me. Uh, update this. If you are trained in animal handling, athletics, arcana, history, medicine, nature, performance, persuasion, religion, or sleight of hand, yeah, like three of those. You, you can make a, a check of said skill. And I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna paste them in here so you can see them. And you will be able to find books in regards to that specific thing. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look look for books for, books for athletics. You find uh, a total. You you find enough books that you would say that you'd be able to sell them for two hundred and twenty gold. Okay, let, let's just say I don't want to sell them. It's all gonna be books for for lemons and our library. Or a horde, sorry, or a horde. It will take ten minutes to do your to do a search for each individual one. Just multiply it by ten. Wait a second. So Squall just has spent thirty minutes <laughs> in order to get uh, one hundred twenty gold pieces, one hundred ninety gold pieces, one hundred sixty gold pieces. That's an additional. So, um, Catherick, you find find uh, for in regards to medicine and medical ish sort of things uh, some volumes that are very interesting that cost about two hundred and sixty gold pieces. And uh, while Squall is taking those extra twenty minutes, um, Catherick is just Blue is gonna look for that. Um, boy, I don't think would be looking for books, honestly. Well, I see it that way. Boy is not a reader. Yeah, but it's not for selling. It's for favors for, like, from, from the sister. Okay. Like, if I bring her a good book, she's going to be good. Like, she's not going to tell on me. 
Wow, this this one. Oh, this kind of seems interesting. It's something about like uh, magic. So, so <laughs> it, it's a really expensive uh, book full of party tricks. <laughs> Sleight of hand party I, tricks. Can I put like three or four books of the things that I've rolled? Like three books on animal, three books on the uh, bug building, and three and books it, on. In in general, the total amount that you could probably sell the books for are basically what you rolled times ten. Yeah, I, but I don't want to sell them. I just want to give them like I, I, I just yeah you, yeah I, I I'd be okay with just like picking a number, whatever you want to do. Okay. But the total amount of interesting books you could sell, um, you you could basically think if. If you looked at, at this and were able to spend enough time, one, there are literally a ton, ton of books. Actually, more than a ton of books. And I'm talking about weight. Yeah. Uh, if you took all of these books, you would have probably have a good amount of, of cash. Um, well, so, spent 30 minutes doing this. Yep. Oh, another 30 minutes could it be considered a short rest is it just rousing looking at books like yeah, sh light sure okay, everyone so. okay with spending another 30 minutes um, uh, well we just gotta rest here lives. that 30 minutes was a lot like we can come back here afterward I i'm also asking for a short rest so i get my two spell slots back i understand but we're already on short times. Remember, the one is getting attacked right at the moment. I thought they were hiding. Well, they might get discovered. Um, when, while that first 20 minutes are going, yeah, uh, while looking for the book, could I, uh, Sure. Roll me a d4. Uh, an arrow uh, uh, suddenly uh, falls into the center of this room. But I'm not the okay. I'm not the only one taking the the decision. So, um, Cinderlove and Kedrick. Oh, I will acquiesce. I don't mind uh, taking a short rest. It's just I, I, I want to go through these 20 minutes first. Yeah, I, I was currently deciding on a thing and back to current time. So, uh, By current time, Zinderlov's like, well, I don't see any other followers. So Unless somebody had already gone ahead, and based off of the blood that was shown before, it is possible that he has gone gone ahead, but there's no one besides us who are behind him. There are no additional pursuers. That is what I deduce. All right. Um, in that case, I'm all okay for that. Um, I'll take the last 30 minutes to look for stuff, I guess. Sure. Because I mean, I'm not gonna do other. You have to be you, you have to be proficient in it. So if you're not proficient in it, you can't can't roll for it. Um, history, Arcana, because I've done none of those. Wow. Uh, nay, not nature, sadly. Religion, neither. Survival, there's none. So yeah, she's uh, that's gonna be. Uh, I'm good. She's gonna do like 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes, because I don't have another one. But those are good subjects. Um, after I shot that arrow, I would have liked to visit this room that we saw Zenlov uh, and Frederica come out of. Looking for the arrow. Uh, you do not see the arrow. Okay. 
Frederica, Zinderlov, Squall, and Boy would have noticed an arrow coming from, like, out of nowhere from the ceiling. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, but I'm, I, I'm telling the other characters that they saw. That's dangerous. <laughs> Why is an arrow? What the fuck? Uh, I don't worry we... about arrows coming out of the ceiling now. God damn it. Uh... Should I have gone and checked this room? I'm going to roll Arcana. Uh, the the so you're looking in this room. That's where everybody is. <laughs> or so you ch yeah. So if you you check this room, all you see is like a storeroom of like alchemical components. Like going up to see the arrow, would I have noticed that this is one of Keithric's arrows? Keithric, are your er do your arrows look like anything special, or are they just plain arrows? Thing. Um, no, uh, okay. no person that gives us our um, quartz. Quartz. Uh, yeah, he gave me a unlimited thing of um, our. Oh, he gave me an unlimited quiver. So I don't know if those have like special arrows. No, it it just produces a non-magical arrow. Yeah. It magically creates an arrow, but it's just a non-magical arrow. Yeah. Well, I'll hold on to it and then because be like, well, Keith Rick can use this. So I'll, I'll pull it out, like try to pull it out so it doesn't damage the arrow. Where well, it landed. Just a big cover, I guess. Yeah, you notice that the 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 arrowhead is a little little bent, a little damaged, because it's like it was shot from the ceiling and then hit the floor, but the floor didn't take really take any damage. The floor damaged the arrow, but it's not by much. Okay. Well, I'll still give it to him. Uh, one more question. Mm -hmm. um, Just one. While coming back down from that room, um, this room, mm -hmm. coming um, back down so I can get back to the party, um, I saw something out of the corner of my eye um, like would Ketherick had noticed um, whatever's right there I don't know was he was he what's his passive perception again 16 is it um, he wasn't if he wasn't paying attention if he wasn't actually specifically looking down that hall uh, he may not have saw and just kind of like at the right angle, he probably wouldn't have seen it. Okay. Or noticed it. <laughs> yeah, you're not. Yeah, so there, there is walls here. Like here. But there isn't walls here. Okay. So does that kind of give you a... I'm not sure if you can fix it or not, and then I'll hand it to him. Like, uh, Keys are, you, you did tell it's it's the arrow that you shot down. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I, um, I was shooting, and I guess it decided to come here. I don't know. Probably yeah. what happened with us earlier. Okay, so you shot an arrow not knowing what was going to happen. Yeah. And I'm okay. the reckless one. Hush. Um, or like, he just like look at you and be like, hush. Um, let's not do that again. Um, we're going to need uh, big brain thoughts here. Um, well, um, I know, now, I know I am very a curiosity, but this could have struck one of us in the head. I really and... wouldn't have heard. I am sorry. But we now know that falling down means that you end up somewhere else. Yeah, but it does hurt a little. I do not recommend it. And looking to sister, and like, yes, I understand that it wouldn't, like, for some people it wouldn't hurt, but other people... 
aren't don't wear head protection. Yeah. Well, at the time, I did not know that it was gonna jump in. Understandable. I am sorry Le if it. Hey, it's it's good lesson learned. Yeah, don't be sorry. Let's just move on. Is everybody ready? Short rest. Yeah. Would I have yeah. enough time? Yeah. I mean, just kind of like looking around and 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 slightly meandering. I would still consider that a short rest. Actually, uh, I think uh, boy was really unlucky, and he was hurt. Uh, add anything? No, you add your need, uh, fire. Um, so I just roll a roll. Okay. Six. Yeah, I lost my armor to Agatus, but hey, it was worth a worth the spell talk because we weren't sure what's gonna happen. But they're just tiny elementals. We could have dealt with it. I was more worried. I'm like, I'm not worried about the banishment. No, I'm worried about you using your spell slot on such weakling creatures. You said, oh, and isn't you the one there saying that time is of the essence, so we're able to hurry along a fight, didn't you? I get it, but at the same time, you had to rest for an hour, so... Actually, we were all looking at books, I just asked for enough to take a nap. I get it. Actually, no, I didn't take more, much more than time than we were already using. I mean, at the end, I just got more book for uh, Sota and Cyrus, so... Yeah. By the way, do you guys intend to read those books? Or later. sell them? I'll look at these later. Okay. You can use as many uh, hit dice as you want, right? As yeah. much as you up have. 13. Yeah, up to 13. But when we take a long rest, you only get half of what you... Uh, half of yeah, you don't get half. Well, so my role is half of your total come back. So even if you don't, if you don't use them all, so you would still get six back at yeah. this point. And remember, and remember to also add your constitution modifier for each of these rolls. Yeah. I don't have a constitution modifier. So. Oh, okay. So you oh. can add it seven times. Uh, four times. Yeah. So. Okay. You'll never see the I difference. Can use, I can use two more, and by the time we take a long rest, I'll get them all back. So I've used four. Squall is doing hit and run tactics. <laughs> banish. Run. You get a banish. You get a banish. Everyone gets a banish. All right. Move out. I guess we do a deck save? Uh, highs or lows? Lows. Okay, roll me a d20. Okay, hey, roll me the next. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty. Uh, uh, and this would be once everybody else gets on, everybody gets out of the room. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, oh. Yeah, damn, sister, what's wrong with you? Did you move? The oh, screen? oh my God! It was so close to being a natural twenty, and then it rolled to two. Then what are you doing? <laughs> the thing gets knocked off. Okay, quick, well, <laughs> quick question. So, would Zen have made a noise when he got here? Here, go ah! Whoa! He's like ah shit. So, seeing him move within the second. I mean, he's a big, big boy. <laughs> okay, so yeah. in, like, we're gonna pause quick because I have a question about this. Yeah, go ahead. You want to do a reaction essentially, right? Kind of, yeah. It's it's an action, but I want to use it as seems then fall. Yeah. Okay. Our step. I get to teleport sixty feet. 
at like. And you're going towards Zindralov? Well, I'm gonna go like jump towards Zindralov and get to him, and then far step up. Because I think I just didn't have far step. Let me let me look because I don't think I understand. No, I do. Okay, so yeah, I would um sketch Zin and then thunder step up. Yeah, I tried to do that earlier. Okay. It didn't really work. I wanted to do Dimension Door. You didn't say you wanted to do Dimension Door. But I know, but I need to reach it. And at the same time, we were falling, so it didn't work. You, 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 didn't, you didn't mention it. But, but yeah, uh, Squall could have like quickly uh, jumped in. I want you to do, give me an uh, acrobatics check. Not gonna be too hard. Do you know I mean? Perfect. So you're able to to grab onto uh, uh, Zindralov and then thunderstep back onto the platform. I'm fine with using a spell slot for that. It's like, oh, oh, those meteors hurt. Quick, let's let's get out of here. And he runs down the path. He just like runs down here. <laughs> what did you say, Keytrick? Oh, I was. I was reminding you that you gave me the that cloak that gave um dimension door. Yeah, um, uh, Win said there was another one. Like he said, he came and be like, "Oh no, take this one." Uh, like, yeah, uh, great court had one, I think. Yes, great court. All right. All right. What you doing? Gotta go that way. Alright, cool. Oh, what room number is that? Okay. Do, do, do. Light shines out uh, head as the corridor opens into a room full of comfortable looking oversized furniture in the center of the room. A red skinned creature. Creature wearing armor of flame, bronze, and a volcanic stones. It's cross legged on the floor, studying a chessboard. Do I recognize what this creature is? It is. Definitely in a free. Ooh, a chessboard. I love this so game. So I was be like, all right, guys, um, that's an Ifrit right there. Uh, we need to be cautious. Why? It's an Ifrit. And? Uh, actually, I'm going to roll Arcana just to make sure if I know or not this creature, I guess. 17. It's in a freight. Fair I don't enough. understand what that is. Well, if freeties are not that scary. You know, it's a it's a fire genie. Yeah, like, they can be they can be tricks like a little bit of tricksters say one thing and mean another and just caution is advised. Uh hold on, let me check something quickly here. So okay. Is he um, looking at the board. Uh, he's he's currently looking at the board. You also notice that across the doorway here, or like the like just the entrance of the room, there's this line of salt. Um, so I'm just gonna ask the, him. Quit uh, with the 18. Would I understand what that scored for the arcana? Yeah, with the uh, 17. What? I got an 18. You got an 18? No, that's, that's no you did an ac. The last thing I see of you is an 18 of record packets. Sorry. Yeah. Dude, to try to understand. Oh, I'm definitely going to hopefully understand this. 24. Yeah, the, there's a line of salt there, which is an enchantment to basically uh, trap the Ifrit there. All right, so I will um, point that out and be like, don't cross that. Don't break it. Don't nothing. That's keeping him. Why? Uh, are you looking for that mage? But maybe the mage is inside there. You know I can hear you. Yes, we are looking for that mage. Hey, he was just here. See. Hey, I. I... 
I don't suppose you could like see that line of salt there? Could you, could you just break that? I'm, I'm gonna back after sister said I could be lying too. I'm gonna back out. Like okay. Well, he's saying this is keeping you from exiting this place. Uh, yes, that's why I would like you to break it. What was going to happen if we break it? Uh, I would be free. That's it? Yes. No revenge on anyone? Well, based off of time, I'm not even sure if Zaldal's still around. Zonthal? The one who created this tower? Oh. There, there's a reason why it's called Zonthal's Tower. I'm not sure if they, that anybody told you that. We're not here for sightseeing, unfortunately. You, no you, 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 were, you, were, you were told, and I think even the note that uh, um, the, your mage, the mage that you're looking for sent, Mentioned this was called Zonthal's Tower. Yeah, the sister looks like someone who reads notes. I would have said it out loud before it was beginning, but... I mean, if you're worried about me, like, harming you or anything... Oh, no, I'm not. I, it's, I, I do have no desire to hurt anybody right now. I would just prefer to be free. Don't get me wrong, I like, like chess, but it's been a long time since anybody played with me. Those are going to be thrown. He, he seems legit. You see, he's, he's doing good. He's, it's fine. Actually, question. With it being a free and... I, my understanding of a genie, could I, would I be able to get, like, some advantage with telling if he's lying or not? Um, no. By the way, he speaks common? Of course we speak common. That's great. I thought your kind only speak your native languages. Usually preference. I would have a, like any insight uh, advantage on knowing if he was on them. Since you, you would. I, I don't think you would. Okay. Just, just, just because it's it's like just because they're a uh, they're air genasi, you would have an advantage. Like check. Well, I meant, I so. Had a genie patron, and I worked with a genie. Yeah. It, same thing. It's. Just because you've worked with somebody doesn't mean the same people of their race would you be able to determine if there's there's a lie. Just checking. Yeah, yeah. Good question, but no. You have any questions for him? See, he he's not aggressive. We can just free him and go on our way. I mean, nobody would, would like to be trapped. For how we know, he might have, like, a family somewhere. Saying out this, you told me I could be lying. Yeah. All right. I guess the silence is telling, so I'm just going to break, like, the line. They're like... I guess you're free now. Oh, finally. Thank you. And he leaves. And what is in this room? Uh, you see a chessboard. <laughs> the mid, the midway chess. Um, yep. Chess stuff. Yeah, it looks like White is winning. All right, I guess uh, last door it is.
Everybody ready? Well, staying quiet for right now, because, hey, he could be lying. All right, let's go. Two massive hourglasses occupy this uh, irregularly shaped chamber. Their glass globes are nearly 15 feet across, with each hourglass rising almost in the, to this ceiling 30 feet overhead. Each is suspended by chains, pulleys, and gears in such a way that it can be turned over to set its sand running. Slumped against the wall on the far side of the chamber is the cultist who called you from the balcony balcony of the tower. His dark robes are charred and torn, and a blue dragon mask is clutched in his red stained hands. Alright. Ready to go? Go up and to grab the mask. You grab the mask? Um, can I You didn't say he was dead, right? Uh, he well, was you dead because he said it was his body was charred and all this stuff. Oh, I mean, do you, do you want to examine him to see if he's dead? Yeah, yeah, he's dead. Can uh, I can I can can I roll uh, medicine to check how much time it's been? Where would Zindelov be right now? Uh, probably following everybody. I have been making it a uh, goal of mine to stay behind Zindelov. Or at least um, compared to where Frederica is. Uh, like being Always the opposite side of Frederica. Yeah. Zindelov always in between. <laughs> So this would be Swell's first time seeing one of these masks. Um, if he wants to do, like, investigate it some to see what's so special about it, like, if you could tell what's special about it. Can I do, like, a arcana How long check? has... Yeah. yeah, sure. How long has it been since uh, he died? Um, shortly uh, at, uh, before, like, Probably like a, a like, like ten fifteen minutes after he had already had talked to you from the balcony, talked to boy from the balcony. So like a couple hours. Do you have something to bring him back, Sin? Uh not today. Oh, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Hold on. Yes. It does. I amend my statement. He has one spell slot that he can use for it. Um, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Is this true? Vivify or Revivify? Revivify. But I'm French Canadian, so don't take my advice. <laughs> English is not my first language. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So Zindralov uh, walks up to the body and uh, examines it and says, Do you want me to do it now, or do we want to take the body and uh, return home and do it? Pick an option. Great option. Well, maybe he knows of secret places in this place. I mean, do we need to? We could just continue looking around. Sure. I, I have about ten days before we need anything. 
to, to actually happen, actually. Do you have gentle repose? Nope. He does Going not have that bear bear. With the, uh, the corpse in the bag of holding? I don't think it needs to breathe anymore. I'm sure we can carry it and... I am not sticking that in my bag. I mean, we have a way to teleport, right? Yeah, uh, the way of, to teleport is gone with, um, with Rabbit. Oh. Oh my god, we need to find, um, <laughs> um... That's why this major life could be useful, but yet again, maybe he's not. We need to find Slacker. No, actually, we we. Could <laughs> Bahanitz, boy, got a message from from Krebus saying that Layden said that Bahamut said that he is he is has uh, 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 he, he's having Cyrus do something for him. Metagame wise, I don't know what that thing is, but he is. <laughs> we'll figure that out when Cyrus comes back. Yeah. Um, yeah we'll so, no, it's it's gonna be a while probably. No okay. before I tried reaching out to him the other day and he hasn't responded, but he, it's probably just one he has to get settled and possibly once we move to Sunday it'd probably be a easier thing for him to do but till then um Sorry. so i did get nine on the checking of the mask yeah it looks just like a, a dragon mask that's blue i've seen others around like that can i look at it Do, can i well, get a look at it for, like it's a mask that feel, that's blue like i don't feel like do i at least feel anything magical coming off of it no no you can't really tell. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like this doesn't seem magical at all. Like it's a uh, mask. I don't know what to explain. I'll hand it to his sister and go look at these hourglasses. Um, boy, you've held one too. Can you help me out? Uh, yeah, sure. Does oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait. But oh, Mama, yeah, this. The the one that I, that we found before was a fake. Well, then ignore the advantage. Does it kind of help? Yeah. Well, I mean, your first roll was twenty eight, anyways. Uh, yeah, it's magical, but it's like an illusion sort of magic in the fact that it's giving the illusion that it's. A, a real dragon mask, but it's not an actual. That's not the actual dragon mask. It's a fake. Might it might be if you tune to it, you might get like a, a plus two to AC, something like that. But so there's magic in it. Just it's not probably not the real dragon mask. Well, is there anything of note with these hourglasses? Uh, the hourglasses. Mm. Just going upward. Jesus, I uh, they could be rotated with, by by some chains. But it's just filled with sand. Doesn't look like anything in there. Yep, just looks like sand. Go ahead and go to the chain and try to rotate this. Uh, you rotate it and the sand starts moving. Nick, how tall are these? Uh, they are two massive hourglasses occupy this irregular shaped chamber. Their glass globes are nearly 15 feet across, with each hourglass rising almost to the ceiling 30 feet overhead. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my elemental gifts. And kind of 
boat to the top. And okay. Just, I want to make sure no one's trying to hide anything in these. So, like, we're flipping it up, like, what was on the bottom of the hourglass will not be on the top. Okay, a uh, slight addendum. When you pulled it and, and rotated the hourglass, uh, you did hear a hideous ear grating groan. <laughs> sort of thing. I got unfolded like, in our, our fingers. Like gears, gears turning or something? Yeah. Okay. Um, so floating up to the top, do I notice anything on the top of the boat? Nope. Checking everything. Are, uh, uh, are you looking for anything in particular, Squall? Just curious. Like they're, they're here. Someone could easily hide something in these. And... Like, are you thinking like they may be magical or something? Possible. Okay. He snaps his fingers. Oh, yeah, there's a faint transmutation magic within the sand of each of these hourglasses. Faint, like, weak? Yes. Okay. Uh, I could spell it. We can only do it on one, I think. Well, it's transmutation, so, I mean, if you're trying to get to the sand, you're going to probably have to break that glass. That works easier for me. I'll just black. Uh, Roll me an attack. You hit. <laughs> I should say roll damage. <laughs> doesn't... Because yeah, what is your what is your bonus to hit? <laughs> Twelve. Yeah, you hit. <laughs> They're not that hard to hit. The AC of five. <laughs> Doesn't Eldritch Blast needs like a creature? And boom, boom. Um, you, you do some damage to it. Starts cracking. It, it's an object. It could. It can technically be considered. Uh, do Do you want to do another one? It, Uh, did did you want to do, do you, you only did one one of your beams? Did you want to do more? It hasn't broken. It looks like it's cracking, but it has yeah, broken. I use all uh, three of my beams, so two more, two more. Okay. Um, let let's do them one at a time. Okay. So with these, ignore the fire damage that's going to come from it. Okay. We got 11 plus 8. Okay. Uh, do your third one. He could yeah, oh, 20 damage. Man. Well, 15. Cause that's oh, 15. 15. Nice. Still. It automatically rolls the genie's wrath. Yeah, that's fine. Um, it's still, it, it breaks. Uh, and the uh, sand goes spilling on onto the floor. You do see some glinting coming from from the sand. You want to uh, like look through? Yeah. All right. Roll me a uh, d4. Roll, roll me a d4 plus two. Ah. No slash then r. <laughs> You can just go on your left and yeah, roll the d4. So then I can have it just auto. Yeah. So you find uh, sifting through the pile, you find uh, six uh, tiny diamonds amid the grains of sand. Okay. Is 
like the tiny diamond. I don't say anything. Yeah, roll me the slighted hand. Yeah, you better roll high. You're paying attention to a mask. While this is happening. Yeah, but I'm not the only one in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you 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 easily pocket the six diamonds. No one's in, any the wiser. Do you still feel that um, transmutation properties? Uh, yeah, the, there's some. I, I, not so much on the one that you just broke. Uh, but there is something on the other one. Uh, roll me the attacks one at a time, just to see how many you need. Basically, basically, you're trying to get get a total of twenty five points of damage. <laughs> so eight plus five, that's thirteen. Okay, keep going. Okay. Oops, that should do it. Twenty-one. Nope. Twenty. Uh, Twenty. Uh, I'll I'll say this: you're not an initiative. <laughs> you you keep firing El Eldritch blast. It's a cantrip. You can do it over and over again. Oh, twenty-seven. Okay. These are just the D the D ten, so I get plus five. Yeah. So that one shatters. Sand spills through the floor. Roll me another uh, D four plus two. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it is obviously that he's breaking the glass of these these hourglasses and spilling the sand in the ground. It's it's not like he's sleight of handing the breaking of the glass. He's sleight of handing the the diamonds that he finds. I'm asking because I yeah, specifically with the verbal components. <laughs> I'm just hearing glass, so I just yeah. You hear. <laughs> You hear pew pew, uh, crash, and then maybe the sound of sand like spilling onto the ground. Like a shh. Uh, you find find tiny diamonds. I need to make me another sleight of hand check. Nope. Okay, there's some diamonds in here. Okay. <laughs> is, is something wrong? <laughs> oh, I found diamonds. Squall shows you that he found five tiny diamonds. And, and and Zinderlov looks at the diamonds that you present and says, oh, that's where the transmutation magic's coming from. Really? Hmm. I wonder what it's doing to these. Can we go now? Fine by me. Take the body. Yeah. Um. So tiny diamonds. Like how much does it say? How much they're worth? Uh, you don't know. Okay. They, there is somebody who would be able to tell you that. Okay. You'll have to get him appraised. I could be lying. Well, you you are lying, so you know, like. <laughs> Anyways. Stuff. I didn't say I didn't have it. I, I just didn't You're say nothing right. about it. You're Look, right. Frederica. Is still a lie. Freder Frederica, all you know is that he found five tiny diamonds amongst all this. She doesn't mind about. She doesn't. That's not the problem. Okay. <laughs> you don't know about the other one. Yeah. <laughs> By uh, one. <laughs> you know, she would. She would just simply ask the question because she's that blunt. Is that all you've found? Yep. Then you roll deception. She knows you're lying. No, 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 no. <laughs> you roll insight. 
and he it's it's contested, so you gotta roll an insight. And Squall can roll deception. Well, everybody wants to. I wouldn't have any reason to. So. Yeah, he, he's lying. She gives you don't know exactly what he's lying about, but he's lying about something. They related to that. Yeah. You don't know the specifics. She doesn't mind me. But if anything... There's five tiny diamonds. I'm gonna incite the tension. <laughs> you realize that Frederica really doesn't like anybody. <laughs> That's not true. Oh, she likes boy. <laughs> All I've been doing is helping. I've been helping you guys out. And then just politely, oh, you could be lying. I'm like, well, fuck you too. Well, like I've been, you're, I've been just helping. I've been just helping you out. But you're still taking it like you're just taking it bad at this point. Yeah, she said you could be lying because everybody can be lying. You said Squall the Efreet can be lying. Squall, could, Squall is offended by that because he's giving you nothing to make you feel otherwise that he could be lying about something at the point you said that. Catholic just whispers he's in the log. Let's go. She didn't imply you were lying when you said it. She said you could be lying. Like everybody can be can be lying. Like your point is not valid at this moment. No 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 no. He he took it as you're saying that he's lying. So it's okay. She now has proof that she's right. <laughs> Any whom? Can we go now? Do you want us to do a deck save when we pass this corridor? Uh, yeah, give me a everybody, give me a deck save as you're passing down the hall. Oh. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were teleporting out. I uh, know you do. You don't have to teleport album. Cyrus does. <laughs> and Cyrus isn't here. Yeah, because they uh, don't. They didn't want me to have it, even though I bought it. All right, uh, Zindralov successfully stays on, but Squall, Fuck. you fall off the platform. Can you do anything? Understand. If he has a spell slot. Squall? Um, He's thinking. Wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Okay. Um, no, I'm actually not going to use a spell slot, but uh, Elemental Gift. Gonna, you're going to float down? <laughs> well, no, I have a flying... I have a, oh, you get a fly speed, flying? so... Yeah. yeah, so then you just... Pop back up. Uh, you also take uh, what was it again? Uh, ten ten bludgeoning damage. Uh, but otherwise, you you make it all the way back to the teleport room. Oh. Well, we still have other places to um, search, I guess. If you want so. Otherwise, we'd need to contact um, Leiden for him to come and pick us up. We know how to get out of the tower. You uh, see the the panel here has a chair, two chairs, upside down L, rectangle, flame star, and square, and that's it. I'm gonna search the pockets of the the mage. 
Uh, strangely enough, he doesn't have anything because I don't feel, don't feel like giving him any treasure. Actually, no. Let me do that. Hold on. Let me quickly roll, quote unquote roll for it. Who has the rich guy? Um, no, Frederica. I guess because I I'm the strongest. Uh. And decide nobody wants to like hold the dead guy. So. I mean, I, I would have, but. Roll me a d10. D10. One. One. <laughs> you find 110 electrum pieces and 110 uh, gold pieces. No, that's not what I'm looking for. I just leave them there. Yeah. So you... So you that that's pretty much he he that's all he had was that so but you see you but you see uh they by the teleport the circle or uh, the teleportation pad i'm gonna say you see a chair two chairs an upside down l a rectangle a flame a star and a square Where do you guys want to go? I'm gonna go look for Zendalon. <laughs> I'm uh, he, he, just assume he's he's following. Um, wasn't there corpse of cultist when we arrived? Yeah, the, well, the the corpses are there too. So, um, can I search their corpse? Say to to search for well, like keys. For keys? What 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 key are you looking for? Well, earlier we found a, an hourglass to come here. Right, and but you didn't need it. you didn't need a key to get to get to the observatory. Just touch the symbol, right? But you can search them, and all they have are uh, I'm gonna stand on the pad and touch the square, I guess. Yeah, you find about twelve gold pieces on one of them. A ten gold pieces on another, Can you and on sheet, uh, scroll? seven gold pieces on the third one. Yep. Are you are you taking everything? Uh, not the uh, the hundred EP and hundred ten GP. It's on the guy I'm I'm holding. Two, so so twenty nine gold pieces. Yeah. So which one did you press? Square. 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 Square, okay. We already have a star, we didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, star is observatory. So you're going to somewhere completely different. Yay. Uh where are you going? I mean we're here, let's just finish this dungeon all together. <laughs> oh, so we're really trying to go to don't we have a body that we need to save? Uh, he's in my, like, here, and I just point at the cadaver on my shoulder. Yeah, but, is, so, are you going to explore while carrying a dead body around, or are you going to just leave and, and get him to a safe place where you can, <laughs> you can raise him? We should, to, we should try to find a way to leave. Well, yeah, but, like, at the same time, we might find a way to leave by going to other places. Let's try to remember the front of the dungeon and tr the front of the tower because these all probably make sense in some way. The star led us to the observatory where they would be able to look at the stars and stuff. There's probably, if we think back on what oh. we saw back yeah. then, there probably is some, something we might have got minuscule at the time but made sense back then. Well, sense for, back then. for now we're in the square room. But probably the rectangle would resemble a, a door. Right, okay, I haven't moved you. So I'm assuming that you're just having this conversation before you actually go. So here's how I, how I picture this happening. Is when you press a button, the teleport ring, it, it 
in that location will start glowing and we'll kind of have some sort of representation of the destination symbol and you have to step into it. So as far as I'm aware, you've just pressed the button. You haven't actually gone in. And you're debating what, which one to actually press. <laughs> I want to try to remember if I, the teleportation circle that got us into the tower. The, the teleportation circle that got you into the tower didn't have one of these. You just stepped into it and got into the tower. You're saying that the, on the teleportation circle, certain like the symbol kind of lights up in a circle, right? Right, to where you're going. So I'm trying to see if the trying to remember what that teleportation circle had on it to see if it like corresponds it to something. It didn't have one. It, no, it, it didn't have it didn't have a pan it had, itself, but it had a, the okay. circle had symbols. Roll me roll me a history check. That's what I'm trying to remember, the symbols of that. Yeah. I mean this the square might be a hatch or like yeah, you, you, you're trying to remember what symbols were there and, like, compare to, like, what you had seen in the, the uh, observatory versus what you saw when you first entered the tower to get to the observatory. can't really recall what it was, what they were. Um, the two chairs, the two chairs were where we started for that first room. Are you sure? Yes. I remember that now. Like, I, like, Dustin remembers it, so... But that's fair enough. <laughs> At least that one room, like that where we started, was the two chairs. I was about to. As we tried pressing that one, and it didn't do nothing. I remember this now. So um, square, upside, upside down L or rectangle. I voted for square. Well, there's also chair because there's chair, a symbol of a chair, and a symbol of two chairs. Like they're, they're two different ones. Um, yeah. I want to say upside down L. Anybody else? Can can you guys vote, please? Your silence is deafening. Um. Uh, I I would say that we would just backtrack the way we came. So uh, I would say the star because that took us to the observatory and basically just follow our path. Backwards. But we could just take the two chairs, no? I mean, we could take any of them. But I, I'm guessing one of these takes us straight back to the front oh, of the tower where we first, the first teleportation circle that we, we got to. And of all the symbols, so there's like the sundial and the maze and all that, for some reason just the L hits me that. That one. Which one are you choosing? I'm gonna um, do a D6 and going off of what it lands on, I'm just pressing it. Two chairs. Okay. So when you go to press it, you realize that the two chairs each are its own button, like they're half and half. So are you hitting the left or the right? So wait, there is a technically a total of seven buttons. Yes. Um, odd, I'll do left. Even, I'll do right. The right one. Right. Okay, so a right facing chair symbol appears in the teleportation circle do you jump in i jump okay i go in after him cuz he freaking i have a soft spot for him cinder laws falls too uh so ah i don't want to resize you what are you doing hey, there you are they want to select and move. There we are. Frederica, do you, uh, boy, do you follow? It's like, boy goes, goes, oh, well, off we go. And he disappears into the teleportation circle.
this isn't what I wanted. Just Frederica, do you follow? Yeah. Okay. Does Keithrick start hyperventilating? <laughs> it's a closed off area. I'm right next to Frederica. Um Yeah. Uh, I will say this. I'll say this. You can actually you're actually on a balcony. Uh the the dynamic lighting's kind of wonky. You're actually on a balcony, uh, so, which you can climb over and drop down about five feet to get down to here. Okay. Okay, so the two chairs took us to the... Okay, so we're back in the main spot that we're in. Yeah. Okay. So... I'm now... Down L, rectangle, square. Oh, actually, there was more. I just I might have accidentally forgot to put one in there. So, if you look at the next to the teleportation pad here. I don't know why the map just lit up for me. Like I could see everything. Like when I changed my page from like the MDB on to Roll Twenty, I could see everything. I don't know. Refresh. No, now it's okay. Like I don't see it. Like I click on the map and it's like uh I was gone. So, so the teleport the pad next to the uh, the controls next to the teleportation circle have these symbols, and obviously the two chairs is the same and has a it, look, you can press one side or the other. Okay, I actually okay seeing all these now. Right, right triangle, because that was to be the sundial. It's already level 12. Um, I pretty much... Catherick is agreeing with anything. But if, if no one picks something, he's just going to press another button. <laughs> this is a, I like squirrels. Like, press the right triangle, and you walk into... The teleportation pad symbol of the uh, right triangle appears up. Uh, on the actual pad. You step on the pad. And everybody else follows, I'm assuming? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Whoop. Do do. Yay. And north. Uh, you see a path that leads directly to the village. Uh, you also hear uh, sounds of screaming, and uh, some buildings appear to be fire, and there's lightning uh, thundering everywhere. This is, this is going to be good. Uh, I, I send Ragnus up quick into the air to see what's going on. Uh, suddenly, he... He goes up above the hedge line, and all of a sudden, it disappears. He, the tower just disappears, and it's just a, a sea of hedge maze. Call him back. Okay. I mean, the village is just right ahead. You could just walk ahead. Well, I, I there is a fence still there. I was trying to see if, like, try to get like a preemptive look at what's going on. So you actually, if you see that you look ahead and you see the fence, and there's, it's actually seems to be um, it. Something must have broken it, and there's uh, some singeing and 
to it. There's damage to it. And you see this, you watch as this line of a uh, line of uh, lightning flash uh, across the ground, just kind of like sweeps right in front of the area, in front of the uh, hedge maids. I feel like this was done by your little creature, your little creature down here. Who? That a treat, but Frederica uh, let go. I didn't hear you. Sorry, Doug. Uh, the defense, the gate is like melted, pretty much. Um, so yeah, you, you would probably be able to tell that it was somehow damaged by uh, a lightning strike. Lightning strike? Okay, then I won't say. Oh, that. I haven't gotten a blue one. Oh, so I'm do oh. I'm gonna look in the sky for a, like a blue shape. Uh. You can't really see it, it. It must be the magic, but you can't really see. You can only see kind of like there. The magic above the hedge maze gives kind of just a clear night sky, uh, or it, it actually is starting to get to dawn by this time. And so, really, in order to really see what's happening, you have to basically exit the maze. So let's exit the maze, but be ready. This is probably. Probably the the work of a dragon. Yep. So, um, Ragnus is just gonna be on my shoulder for right now. If you want to cast some things, then it's the time. The only thing that can benefit me is if that thing actually does. It's dragon, so more than likely, huh, it might hit me. So, yeah, I'll cast armor of Agathis on myself. Then you don't have no. Uh, Catholic, Frederica, and Squall are blessed. I still have a spell slot. And I'm blessed, okay. Do I need it if I'm already. Uh, if I have the 1d4 of uh, my ring? Or does it stack? Oh. Uh, does Boy have that too? Yeah. Okay. So Zinn, Catherine, uh, and Squall are blessed. Okay, let's do this. Uh, you you walk out and you see this massive blue dragon in the uh, dawn's uh, red light, light flying above above the town, and he spots you coming out of out of the maze, and he just kind of turns and, and flaps his wings uh, to kind of, like, hover there. Uh, can I just preemptively attack, just charge in? We, no, we haven't gotten to the... You're currently in this uh, uh, bubble uh, preventing you from leaving this one area um, until the... Until the uh, enemy finishes his monologue. Yeah. Um, he goes, The masks, fool! The mask is what I came for! Give it to me, and I'll leave these crawling ants with their miserable lives. The queen is returning! Who are you to hope to stop her? Give me the mask. Uh, let's see. Uh, did I get everybody? I need to. Uh... And we're going on just the regular plane ordinary battle map. And I don't really need to have this set to have dynamic lighting at all. So I'm going to turn that off. Save settings. There we are. They, and you can, like, Position, get yourself into whatever relative position. <laughs> uh, to be, and then we can roll for initiative. Do -da, do -da. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. When 
you roll a nat, a nat 20 on this, the sanguine dice, the heart peaks. Poor boy. Rolling so low for once. Yeah, he's a captain. How do you roll a two and a five? <laughs> that advantage. L l look at the boy. He rolled a four and a two. I can't see boy's initiative. Uh, It's under uh, Mother's Frederica, the second one. Oh. The, the small boy beneath it. All right. He's sending Squall! Big blue dragon. Salt blue dragon. Uh, Zendralov says, I'm running out of spell slots! Same. Um, I'm actually going to reach into the bag of holding because I remember what's in there. Um, so they just put some stuff in there, uh, and then pull out the scroll and use it to cast Disintegrate on me. Or, let, let me try to figure this out. Look up Disintegrate and let, let know what I can, like, if it will work. Uh, what what's what spell levels are your pack? I ha it just says uh scrolls uh spell scrolls disintegrate. Fireball, flame arrow. Okay, yeah, but I mean, what spells can you cast? Like what? How? What's the high? What's the level spell that you cast? Uh, fifth level. If it was one of my pack slots, it's fifth level. Yeah, so you're only capable of maximum of fifth level casting a fifth level okay. spell. So, so you can you can do it, but I need you to roll me a uh, charisma check. Oh, okay. I mean, you should be good at that. Exactly. <laughs> and it's a check, so you. No, it's not a. You you won't have event. It's a, it's a charisma ability check. Yeah, so it's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, you totally cast disintegrate. Uh, so he needs a dexterity saving throw, and it would be my saving throw is a twenty. Twenty. He failed. He failed. At, at, at six level, it's 10d6 plus 40. All right. So. He got an eight. Actually, no, he has legendary resistance, so he'll succeed. He still rolled his damage. So, so yeah. So he uses one of his legendary resistances, though, so. Oh wait a minute! No, I hit the, I did that wrong. I did not roll a dex, a dexterity save. Oh wait a minute! Yeah, there we go. That's a dexterity save. So he succeeds. He, he's he's still saved, but he still takes half. Yeah. So seventy-seven half. Is this is thirty-six. Yeah. Uh, no, more than that. Thirty-six. Uh, Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. So that was action. Rather than I... so you pop up in the scroll. You read the incantation. Uh, you have you, you, you're like, oh, this is a hard spell. You're thinking to yourself, this is kind of a hard spell, but 
you strike through it and you point up your finger and this beam of uh, a green light shoot out and he just kind of like swerves to his si- side and you kind of nick him on uh, one of his wings. Um. Got any bonus actions or mo- want to move? Uh, heck, it's just, it's extra damage on top of it all. I'm going to ca- uh, cast Hex on him. Okay. Uh, what are you Xing? Well, you, there, there's only, there's only one creature to Hex. <laughs> no, no, like, uh, the, the Hex spell, uh, you, 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 you cursed a stat. Right. So you place a curse on a creature that you can... No, the Warlock one is um, whenever I hit the target with an attack, I deal an extra 1d6 necrotic damage. Because so, you're a Hexblade, right? No. I, I, oh, no, you're a genius. Right? Oh, okay. No, but it also gets disadvantage on an ability. Yeah, target has disadvantage on ability checks making made with the chosen ability. So what, ju- what ability? This is this is actually not that useful, mainly because it's ability checks, not saving throws. Yeah. yeah. So just to kind of keep that in mind. Yeah, I was more doing it for the one d six extra damage because I'm right. more than likely going to hit with my eldritch. Blade. Yeah, but just, uh, pick a stat. <laughs> Okay. Uh, charisma, charisma. Charisma? Okay. Is that going to use any ability checks? Well, maybe strength. We could try. Yeah, if you're if you're trying to grapple it or, or hold it down, okay, then, that's a check. Uh, that might do that. So then, yeah. So strength. Strength. Okay. Remember that. <laughs> Remember that. All right. Cinderlog. What do, what will Cinderlog do? Um, I'm all, I'm just on the cantrips now. Uh, he's like, oh, did he? He's got it right. Oh, hi. Ooh. Those are free. There you go. Oh no! Oh, Natural one. Can he, oh. if he gets a four on this on this, on this uh... No, this is this is a two hit. Oh. So it, I mean, even if we were were thinking a critical failure still could hit if the total bonus would okay. would hit the AC. He doesn't have no. Uh, he, he, he does have bless, so we could add a D4 to that. It's not going to hit his AC. No, but... <laughs> so a 14 will not hit this dragon's AC. No, but what we, what, we, what he meant is the inspiration, since he's clearly playing his character, like, perfectly. No, the DM has not given Zinder Love a DM inspiration. <laughs> Unacceptable. Should have. <laughs> Anyways. Because armor of Agathus. Thunderstep. Heck, we took a long rest, a short rest after that. No. Because I used my elemental gift on to get Zen, uh, myself out when I fell. Yeah, but like the first one, like it was when we exited the 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 room that you used it. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Once we exited the room again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just trying to make sure. I'm like, okay. everything's all right. Yeah, sadly. Frederica, 
your turn. So um, I'm going to go to the dragon. He's about uh, 10 feet in the air. So he's within reach. Um, okay. In that case, can I, like, somersault with my glaive for go one attack and, like, jump to him? He's he's within ten feet of you. Yeah, but, like, exactly, like, I, I could hit him, but, like, can I, like, jump on him? Uh, sure, give me an acrobatics check. Acrobatic? Or no, wait, wait, no, this would be a athletics check because this would be, like, grapple. Uh, it's also um, he has disadvantage. Uh, Twenty one. Uh, he's able to get out of the way, oh, and you are nearby. Nab- Curve him, so you can still attack him. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm going to do coordinated attack. Okay. Whistle spell. One attack. Uh, miss. Do I need to hit for the coordinated attack, or he just attacks? Need to verify. My bad. It basically, you both take the attack action. The only thing is, you you can't do coordinated attack right now because boy is not in he's melee. Hey, like he's gonna throw. Yeah. He okay. Almost every dagger that he needs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's got plenty of daggers. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can coordinate attack with the throw. That'll be fine. So, Coordinated assault. Yeah. Mm. Yes, it didn't work. He, he doesn't have advantage, right? No. Yeah. Okay. No. So, no, that misses. Yeah. All right. So first. Well, it hits, but it but it wasn't like hard enough to actually do any damage. It's just kind of like pinged off his skin. It's okay. It's okay. Next attack for sister. Does a twenty hit? That hits. Yeah. So twenty six magic and six thunder, plus the six acid. Hey. I guess that's gonna hit. I'll hit. Thirty and with seven of thunder, if it can do something. Last one. This is probably not gonna hit. That does not hit. All right. Um, does boy for his attack action? Does he have extra attack? No, sadly. Oh, you can only do one at a time. Okay. Just checking. So, do you have Constance left or something? Yeah, yeah he's got a ring. Me and boy, we're blessing together. So, um, that's going to be, uh, she done, yeah. She, She's she done? done? Okay. Everything. All right, boy, you start. Boy has more movement speed, so he's gonna go here and just uh, he's gonna bonus action uh, change into his form. Pop. He is now a dragon. No, not that form. I'm sorry. The, uh, what form are you? T- oh, uh, ghost, uh, ghost walk of. He's gonna become ghosty. Okay. He's going ghosty. Uh, and he's gonna like go towards the dragon to like flank with me, mm. and uh, he's going to attack. Okay. First attack with advantage. Luckily, with advantage. I'll hit. I'm gonna sneak attack because he's got a ban- advantage. So yeah. eight and three. And twenty. Yeah, three of us. And... Catherick. Uh, boy is technically fi- within five feet of things, and then you've got other things to give you advantage, anyways. Yeah. That'll hit. 
like sneak for my lightning. And my skin in the lightning doesn't do anything. You guessed correctly. And oh, um, I'll get move away. Dragon decides to do an AoE. Uh, Zenilov is not on a square. I was behind him. Um, it's because he's big. <laughs> five, five, I just five, threw him on. I just threw people onto the map. <laughs> so I was I was uh, saying that because I was trying to figure out how many times I move. Um, five. Uh, it'll be fine if you give an estimate, so. Okay. I, I should be good. Hopefully. I mean, no matter which way around Zinderlof, you would still be in a line with Zinderlof. Just about positioning. Um, yeah. I need everybody to give me a wisdom saving throw as he roars out. Oh, not initiative. <laughs> yeah. What was what was this? It was twenty one, right? Now it's a wisdom saving throw. Central law, so she, he should be fine. Well, should be fine. One would think you would be fine, but but I think. Oh yeah, yeah. With blesses, you also get a D four for with the for saving throws. Okay. Good. Me and boy, we're good. Oh, Cinder left and help. <laughs> All right. Did anybody get below a seventeen? Well, total. Me and boy did, but we're both in, like immune frightened. I mean, okay. because of the armor I'm wearing. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you you saved, and you're immune anyway, so don't worry about it. Um. But everybody you got below 17, which I think was basically everybody else, is currently frightened. And Well, I didn't. I got um, 23. No, you got 23. So, Ketherick. Wait, there's the, the D4 of the Bless. For yeah. The that could save someone. Um, that's what the D4 is at the end of this list for for? Which it didn't. Huh? Oh. It didn't save either of them. I, I didn't see those. So and, I, and I said 17. <laughs> then it, the, uh, each of the, the creatures that can drag its choice can't, is, that is within 120 feet of the dragon is aware, aware of it, but succeed on a DC 17 with some saving throw or be fright for one minute. Uh, if a creature saving throws, the creature. Blah, 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 okay. But you can repeat it at the end of your next turn. But you can't get any closer, and you have disadvantage on attacks to it. After this uh, session, can we talk? Can I uh, give you a idea on a homebrew for uh, yeah. Brighton? I mean, sure, but I'm just going to probably most of the time follow what they have in the book anyways. Yeah, it's you can't get closer, and you had disadvantage on attack rolls against it. You can save at the end of your next turn, so uh, or attempt to save again. I mean, luckily we all get advantage for like now until the the end of Keytrick's next turn, so that's gonna cancel a bit. <laughs> um, Frederica and. Boy, um, I'm assuming you're wanting to make uh, attacks of opportunity as he's attempting to fly away. Yes. But you get one attack each. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yes, sir. Miss. He has advantage. Oh. He misses. Yeah. 
but he has the d4 though. Uh, for roll 20, it doesn't have it. I'm just gonna roll him. If it changes something, 21. Can you have it? Oh, got it. 21, that will hit. Okay, so boy hits and my attack hits. And that's the damage per boy, which is three acid okay. and 37 of the rest. It falls down to the ground. Mm -hmm. You went through all 225 hit points that the, the that he had. <laughs> Before he just he just read like a Karen. Read. I mean, what 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 he probably really should have done was used his action to disengage. Yeah. Also, he probably should have used some of his legendary actions, but uh, I'm bad at those. Oh, he's dead. Well, boy. You've. You've made that thing. Yeah, I'm already. Well, he floats down to the ground and goes, Yes! and becomes corporeal. <laughs> All right. Stupid dragon. Take your spoil of water, baby. You're probably going to be able to get a new dagger with that. Oh, do we not have lightning? <gasps> no, you don't. Mommy, help me with this. Or, I think it might be better than that. Just gonna actually, um, key trick. You're actually probably better than me at depressing a creature like with care. Yeah, do you, do you think it take can it can take it take some teeth out? I want oh, we could we could probably like sell some of these scales or even keep some of them to make like armor. Like you know, it'd be really cool to have blue dragon scale armor. <gasps> you know what would be better than that? What's that? Rainbow scale armor. Oh, I don't know how uh, if that'll work. We'll have to ask Layden. Or 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 Quirk. Oh wait a minute. Quirk going home. Uh, I think they mentioned something about hiring somebody new. We'll ask. Anyways, let's get materials. Come on, Rogue while they do that, um, while uh, Squall was um, grabbing out the uh, scroll of disintegration, he noticed something else in his bag, and mm -hmm. an idea pops into his head. Um, so he goes into his coin purse and pulls out a, um, or with, off the top of his head, would he know how big each pe like a piece of platinum would be? Mm -hmm. Like how big. Well, plat a platinum coin is the same size as any other coin. So how it's like, it's just like, it's made of platinum, yeah. So, yeah, it, it's probably a little bit bigger than a quarter. Okay. Once maybe maybe it's quarter size. In any case, somewhere around there. I I, I kind of need like dimension. Think of it as, as coins would be the size of a quarter. Do you want me to roll um, for, like, depressing the creature? Look, um, Catherick comes up and pulls out one of his daggers and tells you to stand back. Um, and you watch him expertly skin, detoose, declaw, pop out the eyes of the dragon. Um, and just basically disassembled the dragon uh, like a very skilled butcher. If you keep the meat, I can cook. Uh, Zindralov says, well, why don't we give the meat to the villagers? And you look around at the devastation that's happened. Great idea. Um, as, the, as they're doing that... And I'm you probably can't... You, you probably can't necessarily carry all of the, the uh, everything here, so you would take enough for what you would need it for what you want, and then um, you could leave the rest for for resources so they can either sell or something in order to rebuild the village. Um, Makes sense. I'm gonna... I... that, that's Zindralov's suggestion. As they're doing all that, like I'm gonna go around town, make sure like help who needs help, like yeah. find, like if anyone needs help. 
I was going to ask, like, if the if the houses are on fire or, like, crumbling, I might go and help and, like, try to hold stuff or, like, you know, use my, my strength. I can I'm, I can even use my uh, my action to grow large for 10 minutes. Yeah. Xandralov will be doing a similar thing. Because I'm pretty sure it doesn't take five seconds to just uh, zipple down the dragon and, like, skin him. Like, this is not uh, uh, Soma. <laughs> Take 71. However you want to take it. And uh, Zendalov says, says, if we uh, rest tonight, uh, uh, when we're done, I can send a message to Layden to come pick us up. That night, um, okay, we can do that. That night, um, Qual is actually going to put out like after everyone's done like we did all, all that we can to like take care of the damage and stuff and all and everyone's kind of just trying to recoup from the night and all uh squall's actually gonna put on a show for all the kids and stuff um just to kind of lighten up the mood chitantas uh uh helps out by offering to juggle his knives I'm probably gonna. He he he's he's avoiding turning into a dragon because he's afraid that the the uh, town might because he's a black. He would look like a black dragon, uh, despite his incarnum esque um, features. Um, he he avoids doing that and makes sure to stay in his uh, the Dalkin child form. Makes sense. Totally makes sense. And before we, um, and I'll have like Ragnus do little tricks and stuff and all. And um, before, like once everything is done, I'll try to find the like person, like mayor or person, in, like who's ever considered to be in charge mm -hmm. of the village, and give them thirty thousand gold to kind of rebuild it. Thirty. How much? Thirty thousand. Jesus. That that was because of the treasure <laughs> that, that I rolled. Thousand pieces of gold that I. Yeah, I know. I I, I uh, yeah I think that was me rolling the, for the treasure for. Uh, rubbing coros. Yeah. So I have plenty of gold. Uh -huh. Plus, I came up with a way to. Because of something in our my bag of holding. Um. Near the end of the night, uh, as you're soon getting ready for bed, uh, Frederica, you see, um, uh, Chitana kind of looking at a little. A blueish orb that he has floating in front of his hand, uh, above his hand, and he looks kind of in the direction south. Huh. Oh, I forgot something. What? Uh, Mom? Yep. Um, I think I know where his lair is. Oh. Oh, that's his soul, isn't it? Yep. Well, if you want to go, we can. And he, and he closes his, his hands about, about it. Uh, Raven Koros will be taking this where he belongs. And he, and he just kind of like disappears. And he does kind of like the magic trick of closing his hands and then flips it like this and it yeah. disappears. Don't show this to, uh, to Lemon. She's going to think you're more of a magician than she is. Well, I, I mean, it's just part of my thing. I can actually send the souls I collect to, uh, directly to the Raven Queen. Great. Um, let me let me tell the party about it. Um, I mean, we have time. We're here. So. Yeah, if we could, be, we could probably do a detour, and we could like loot treasure, call Laden to to help us haul it away. Yeah, that makes sense. So. Time, Catherine would have tried to climb a tree. 
they're burned down. <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna go in the maze. No, there there there's there's a forest nearby. You can easily you're you're gonna basically go sleep in a tree. Yeah, uh, but closest to the village. He's yeah. not like a close by. Guy. Yeah. Keeps, you, like a you go to the tree tree line, look around, and you find a the the nice tree which has a nice branch, and you go go rest. So, dressed up tomorrow, go treasure hunting. kind of just go up and be like, hey, Keith, can I, can I ask you a favor? Yes. I, I don't feel comfortable, like, because where I sleep, it's in my bottle, and I don't feel comfortable leaving that out or somewhere that, um, like, just out in the open, kind of, and so it's with the, if you can hold on to it while I'm in there. Uh, uh, sure. Thanks, bud. And just like lightly tap him on the shoulder, and then I'll go do, on to my bottle. Do you trust me? I'm giving you my bottle. Okay. Sure. Plot twist: Key trick is gonna be BG. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not uh, a it's not a big thing. If it breaks, I can make a new one. <laughs> um. So yeah, I'm just gonna tell everyone if they want, we can go to the to the lair. And beside, um, when Boy received the sending from uh, Laden, oh, he received it from Krebus. Okay, from Krebus. Uh, can he just send one back? Oh, he did. Oh, he replied. He said, "Okay, I'll tell them." Oh. And then he turned to you and said, "said." Krebus said that Layden said that Bahamut said <laughs> that yeah. it, was a, it was a telephone chain. They, they kept it simple. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. So next game, exploring the Blue Dragon's lair. Uh, which, actually, we don't need next game for. Oh. Because really? the dragon is dead. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Layden, uh, so, uh, uh, Shatan takes you directly to it. It's he he brings out that blue orb that he saw again. Um, uh, they, and he he uses that as kind of like a compass, and he and you are able to locate it, and you find fifteen thousand gold pieces, one thousand nine hundred platinum pieces, a bolt of silver cloth. It's about 250 gold pieces. An ebony, ebony ring inlaid with brass. A silver diadem inlaid with silver. A silver pin inlaid with brass. An ornate silver mirror set with moss agate. And ermine shoes. Oh, this diadem could be the receptacle for the magic item for the dragon. It's pretty, and it's silver. Right? Oh. We just need to enchant it. With what? Anything, as long as it's magic. True. Well, then the, the question is, how do we want it? What are these shoes? They're made of ermine. Uh, what is in there? Ermine is, uh, it, it is sometimes referred to as a stoat, S-T-O-A-T. It's kind of a, it is a, a the stoat or short-tailed weasel, also known as a Eurasian ermine, a Rigonian ermine, or simply just ermine, is a mustelid native to Eurasia and the northern portions of North America. So it's it's weasel. <laughs> so it's fur shoes. Yeah. All right. Basically, you got a, a a bunch of a bunch of gold slash platinum and a bunch of uh, fancy items you can sell. Yeah. Or do is what it is. 
one sec. Um, just with the um, currency we have, not like before we go, like Squalo divvy everything out. Um, everyone gets. Let me make sure I'm reading this right. Yep. Okay. Fifteen thousand, nineteen hundred. Okay. So everyone gets. Thirty-four thousand one hundred and or wait, no, no, I would, I would type it, I would type it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot to put in how many people. So five, right? Um, yeah. Well, uh, I'm sorry. Could could we? Uh, can I just take the army shoes? Yeah. Well, everyone, like, we can figure out the like items later. But I'm just sitting out. Yeah, then the gold, gold pieces. The the the. the He's for he's dipping out cash, not items. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can take the armies. with the cell once we get back to water. Um, so everyone gets six. Uh, oh, so yeah. Um, six thousand eight hundred thirty gold pieces and eight silver pieces. Six thousand eight hundred and thirty. Here, one sec. Yeah, to put it in the chat. There we are. Six eight three zero. And eight silver pieces. And then um four. Okay. Um and then before we go uh Squall goes to bed. Um because he has a little table in his lamp. He is going to pull out the um, Norzel's Marvelous Pigment mm -hmm. and start painting single platinum pieces. We need to do the math to figure it out. One platinum is roughly a inch. Mm -hmm. And Wait. I can cover up to... When did you have the, it was uh... in the bag of it was in the bag of holding. We got it from um, I think it, I'm guessing the way it's written in here. We got it from. You uh, got it from Raven Koros's treasure. Yeah. Oh. You found out. Uh, so roll for how many pots? Because it's one d four pots in the box. Just, just give me. Uh, uh, yeah, we we'll just roll one d four. Two. Got two pots. Okay, so two each pot covers a thousand square feet of a service and ten thousand that let's see. Which lets you create inanimate objects or terrain terrain effects such as a door itself that are up to a thousand square feet. So a thousand square feet I can up to make. Yep. Okay, so And keep in mind keep in mind these platinum pieces that you're creating won't actually be platinum. They will look like platinum pl pieces, but they won't actually be platinum. Nothing no, created I... by the pigments can have a value greater than 25 gold pieces. One platinum, 10 gold pieces. Mm, I suppose. If you paint an object of greater value, such as a diamond or a pile of gold, the object looks authentic, but close inspection reveals it to be made up from paste, bone, or some other worthless material. Okay, so you probably could paint. <laughs> yeah, as as he could paint it two by two. Yeah, as long as it's under twenty-five gold pieces, it's real. So he's he's the uh, squall has figured out how to make money. Of course, how much? How much would the 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 question is how much if you just sold the paints in of the of themselves? <laughs> versus how many platinum pieces that you could paint. 2,000 square feet of one inch platinum pieces. I can make more platinum than probably what this is worth. Damn. <laughs> so I'm like, how big are these coins? You know, they're... they're I, would, I would say that 
but but you're not painting the pile. You're painting the individual garbage seeds. It would t- it would take some. T- it would take a lot of time. So you probably could only do so many. Semi dinner uh, night. It takes me ten minutes to cover a hundred square feet. So I can. It's a process I can start doing. But yeah. So the, the it would take. Yeah, roughly. Be two hundred minutes. So that's three hours or so. So get a good start, get a couple hours into it. And like, I could wake up late. Like, do this, get my eight hours, and says, Keith, we're going to hold on to my bottle. So I come out. <laughs> we call Layden. Layden comes pick him up. You're still in your bottle. You're flying. Uh, we're fl- you're flying along. You probably are in your bottle. Would be like, oh, we're in flight. I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> so okay, so thousand square feet. How many inches is that? Like math. Well, there's twelve inches in a foot. Yeah. So twelve thousand. Broken. Uh, you know, uh, you know that point where everybody's like Laura fucking Bailey. <laughs> oh, you. I, I'm not sure if you even got to that. Where are you in uh, campaign two of Critical Role? Um, they just got to the big tree in the barren fields. Uh. Yeah, you, um, I, I don't think you've gotten to the the Laura fucking Bailey. Um, <laughs> so it's squirt- they 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 <laughs> Laura won D and D. I outsmarted the DM majorly. So there's 144 square inches and one square foot. Yeah, because it's twelve by twelve. Oh, so. so times that by two thousand. How much? Two thousand, because I have two pots. Each pot. Wait, no, wait. That's yeah, a lot. Each, pot, each pot makes a thousand square feet. So one hundred forty-four yeah. times two thousand. So around twenty-four thousand. Platinum pieces. Platinum pieces. Twenty twenty-eight thousand. Let's just make like no twenty four because one one hundred and forty four two hundred eighty eight thousand platinum it pieces. Well, it's it's two thousand feet square, right? Yeah, and and in in a square foot, you have a hundred and forty four square inches. Because oh, right, it's yeah, it's square. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So oh god, so that's two thousand eight hundred and eight. Two hundred and eighty-eight thousand platinum pieces, and which will take time to takes do. You? Oh, we're back at the eyes of Io by the time I get it because I spent about roughly four hours doing this before I take my long rest because I'm in my bottle. And okay, and where are you going to put all this? I in his bottle. <laughs> I have quartz. Um, Ever keep coin keeper. Well, keep keep in mind how much. Yeah, the coin keeper does have a limit of a certain amount of platinum pieces worth of coins. Yeah, wasn't it? Like so 10, it's 000? yeah, it's about it's worth, not about it's. It's not about volume; it's about worth. Yeah, I think it might be fifty. Pieces worth of coins. Uh, I, I think it's ten thousand platinum pieces. Yeah. Yes, it does. How how much it, can he fit? Two hundred and eighty-eight thousand platinum pieces in quartz ever keep coin keeper? No, <laughs> because it's well more than that. Yeah, and okay. it's still place. <laughs> yeah. So once I find out we're back in the eyes of Io, mm-hmm. um, I'll bring all this out. I'll just keep coming out, and then he's just gonna do it on the table. And then divvy that out to everyone. 
<laughs> are you gonna make a donation to the the eyes of io uh lemon will be like like <gasps> this would be great for funding i have something else for you and i'm just gonna drop d let me let me roll out the the, the, the sheet D dustin you'll understand this lemon has become tataru And, and I'm uh, gonna give so everyone in the party gets that much. Wow. Five hundred and seventy six thousand gold pieces. Is that divvied up already? Yeah. No, no, that's that's divided by the five hundred. Jesus. So, uh, yeah, you yeah. Four thousand. <laughs> they can get hundred for me. I don't mind. <laughs> well, I'll take one thousand seven hundred and ninety. Wow, this is absurd. I love it. Y'all welcome. <laughs> I mean, actually, right. looking at what we have in the bag. All right, so next one we go shopping for marvelous pigments. Are we uh doing uh? Currency carry weight thing? Then, uh, no. no. I'm, but no, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have sports for more coin purses. Yeah. We're gonna need more. So, so you were when you arrive at the eyes of Io. Yeah. Um, you see Court and this um, uh, lovely little gnome girl. Uh, probably a little bit younger than Court looks. But not like miraculously. Young. She's just younger um, than him. They're holding hands, and it says, "Well, um, I hate to say this, but um, I would like you to meet Gemna. She will be taking my position here as artificer. She is very talented." Um, she's probably, she's just as good, if not better, aren't you, sweetie? Says, oh, don't say, you're, you're better than me. No, you're better than me. Did they have this, like, little lover's quarrel about who's better, and it's, you know, they're saying the other person's better. Well, Mother Frederica being rude as usual, she's gonna be like, all right, so who's gonna be the lucky one to do the Thunder Dagger? The, the lightning dagger from this freshly killed blue dragon, adult blue dragon. Oh, I, 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 and Jemin says, oh, I can easily get that done in like three hours. And Court looks at her and his eyes widen. It takes me a couple of days to do this. How did you do that? Well, you see, you have to do this certain, and they start going on to talk a uh, techno babble about how to make magic items. And case, Court's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> In that case, you can make the cold one, too. Quartz can show you where it is. Oh, you mean this one? And she pulls out <laughs> the, drug, the cold dragon to the dagger. See, I told you, it, it even works. It doesn't matter what element it is. It's the same process. I've made thousands of these. These. Um, all right. Uh, we need to investigate. Um, do we have? A bit of time. Well, I guess we should go. Um, once, like, I guess we should. Oh God, who who gave us this mission? The Council of Waterdeep. Who was our delegate that like we talked to that gave us the actual information about it? Because we should let them know so they can. All right. Yeah. So you have a red wizard. Yeah, you had a red wizard contact. Um. Leosin, I believe, was the one who introduced you. But and let me get to that. For the, the, for the oh, for the Wizard's, Wizard's Tower. Tower. Yeah. Okay. Was, or was that Grievous? Uh, that was... No, no, so this was a... This was delivered by... A message delivered by a tiefling. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, Catherick figured out he was part of the Zintaro. Um, and it, and it was just a message for him to come pick him up, and that's it. No actual council member asked you to. Okay. Yeah, it would just end up being Boone. Okay. So you came back with the body. Body uh, Layden probably after landing said he would take him to same place where you guys were resurrected, and he'll be ready to uh, be raised. Blue mask, tell him it's probably a fake. Uh, Gemma says, so you can't see it? Okay. And she, she takes out a pearl and puts it on her, at her forehead and her eyes uh, glow purple. And she says, oh yes, it, it, is a, it is a magical mask. However, it's only just provides an additional bonus to the uh, it just gives them additional protection, and that's about it. Does it it's the resistance to lightning, and and just a, a plus one to your AC. <laughs> Does it require attunement? Uh, yes, it would require attunement. If you if you don't need it, boy's gonna take it. If he wants it, I mean. I don't know. I don't really want a mask. Fair enough. I don't want to hide your pretty face any day. I mean, I'm blue anyways. Yes. I mean, blue is great. Of course. Just like you, Mama. So, um... Can I go in town? Yep. And, like, I need to find someone ready to find items for me. Like, I can pay him to find items for me. Here. Like, basically, he's going to take the, the, the downtime activity of searching for magical item. Sure. Um, so you're you're finding some, you're looking for somebody to hire to locate a magic item, or what are you trying to do? Yeah, I'm looking for someone to locate a magic item wherever it could be. Okay, so you ask around, and they say, "Well, this is a great place called Acquisitions Incorporated, where you can hire them to acquire things." That's great. So I'm gonna go I'm there. Yes. All right, I actually want to tag along. Come along. Um, also, well, we should first decide what other, like, items that we just got from the Dragon's Lair do we want to sell? You said you wanted to, the shoes, um, um Peter? Sister, your sister is just going to look at you. At this point, I'm not sure we need to sell them now. Hold on to it. We can hold on to it later. That's fine. <laughs> If you're doing what I think you're doing, it might be a little hard, but all right. I mean... Hey, hey Caserta says, says, ooh. I, 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 I could hold on to it for you. Yes, yes. Take, this, uh, take the, the, the mirror, the silver pin, the, the diadem, and the ring. <laughs> yeah, I... I, I, I. I can hold that on to you. We'll donate it to the eyes of Kyle. <laughs> Girls with jewelry. No, she she takes it and she hides it away somewhere. That's fine. By the way, um, I gave her the forty-two books on different subjects, and I gave her my ten on the um, the ones for the uh arcane. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell her there's so many much more back there, but we couldn't bring them all. And she's like, Layden, I need your help. Layden goes, oh. All right, I'm coming. And and together they they head over to the study. Yeah. Uh Jordan is sitting in the study and they he watches the two dragonborn walk in. 
Uh, Lemon has a stack of books that are taller than her, but she's balancing them with expertise. Layden's got one that's like coming up just so he can like look over him. And they walk towards a, a, a bookshelf, and uh, she says something in Draconic, and the shelf moves aside, and they walk into a hidden passageway, and the bookshelf closes. What did she say? What did she say? I haven't determined that, but it's in Draconic. Sism, open up. So... <laughs> And then a question. Um, once we go to acquisition of the Emporium, I'm going to request a uh, lot of the pack keeper. Um, uh, those are um, very difficult to acquire. Um, yeah, although it seems like like some of the the lesser quality ones have been around and everything uh we have to really search for this this is going to be awfully expensive uh, we think we estimate the cost uh and they start writing a piece of paper and uh, uh, figuring out certain expenses that they estimate so your estimate for this mission uh will be about uh twenty thousand gold pieces Sadly not, and this is just an estimate. If it takes longer, it might ha we may have more expenses. Okay, put the twenty thousand down. Thank you, sir, for your business. Um, hey, Regina, I think this would be great for the D team. Okay, sending on over to them. And you see, see, Regina uh, starts writing into a book. That's the thing. She opens a ba bag and and puts some of the gold inside. Can you by chance have small coin purses? Have what? Just small, plain coin purses. I mean, we're not a magic shop. We're a we're mercenaries. Well, I, hey, you might we acquire to... stuff for people, but. If you, I mean, we do have. There may be something in the gift shop. Okay, thank you. I, I'm not. I'm not. I, I don't okay. deal directly with the gift shop. Uh, you do see some coin, coin purses there. It has this, has the Acquisitions Incorporated logo on there. There's a couple of them which have um, the owner's uh, visage on there, uh, named by Omen Drawn. Regular old, like probably ten or so coin purses. All right. So, um, so you're wait a minute. Hold on. Squall was asking something. So, so you're asking uh, Gemma, 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 not Gemma, Gemma. Non-enchanted coin purses that can roughly hold about a thousand gold. Well, if you're looking for non-enchanted ones, like non-bags of holding-esque ones, uh, they wouldn't. Their coin purses tend to not be that large. Okay, then some small, small ones. It's something that I can like easily hand off bags of a thousand gold pieces. I mean, if you're doing so, court taught me. Court taught me how to do his Everkeep coin keepers. I think I can modify that for a smaller amount. And because it would be for a smaller amount, uh, it will be a lot faster to do. I could probably do um, a couple of them within like five days. Otherwise, if you're looking for like just more of like wanting to get some satchels, you could probably easily purchase them at a general store in town. 
Okay, so here's what I want to do. I'm trying, like... Most people, like, not a lot of people know this about me, but... I was raised in... Oh. And... I know those can be tough living and... Get having money for all the kids and stuff. So I was going to... I have so much money that I don't... I, I don't feasibly see how I'm going to use all this. So I was going to donate some to the different orphanages here in Washington. Oh, why is that so sweet? Besides, there's going to be quite a few. All right. Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold that thought. I've got an idea. And uh, she goes into the back. And... Um, She out comes a warforged with her. Um, it looks more feminine. I would like you to meet Lifta. Uh, Lifta and and the warforged is actually carrying this big sack of canvas, or not sack of canvas. It's pile of canvas says it's going to take me some time but i believe with a little help i might be able to take all this burlap and and create uh pouches and bags uh that would be just the right size they won't necessarily be enchanted but it would be faster than having to enchant them okay um i'm gonna give twenty thousand gold distribute this as you see fit for the orphanages uh, if you want to say that they're from the eye, if you want to make it anonymous, it make say it for the eye to give greater representation. Group, see, do what you see fit, but make sure the orphanage is. Uh, you didn't. Uh, behind you is is a, a young voice. Says, you didn't clear this with me. You turn around and it's uh, Lemon, and she's there giving with her arms crossed. Very stern look. Clear what? Giving money away? I'm just saying you didn't clear this with me. Uh, Gemma, I can I can help out. I I can sew a bit. I've been working on my weaving. She's like, that'll be very helpful. She was trying to intimidate you. She didn't do a very good job because she's a little <laughs> dragon <-woman> girl. <laughs> Art, knock off uh, 20,000 gold pieces from your uh, inventory. They will make their way anonymous anonymously via, via a uh, black, in the middle of the night, a black dragon flies into Waterdeep because she's gotten clearance and sneak. Sneakily, she plays Santa Claus to the uh, to various orphanages throughout Waterdeep. Um, also, uh, this is back before all this happened. Do you by chance have an extra uh, quartz upkeeper coin keeper? Oh yeah, we have like fifty of those. Can I get an extra one? Yeah, sure. And she grabs one, and tosses it over to you. It's oh, purple. They still has like 2,000 <laughs> gold pieces. 2,000 gold pieces? 200,000. 200,000, okay. 200,000. So it's like, I, it's like, I'm getting like 20,000 distributed amongst all the, the orphanages. It's still going to be a lot of gold to the orphanages. Um, yeah. But would I know how many orphanages are there? There's not many in town. Um, knowing your understanding, your intent of kind of like, yeah, there's water deep, but there's orphanages all throughout of the Sword Coast. Um, 
with the help of Layden, uh, Lemon plays. Layden is Santa's sleigh. Lemon is Santa. Let me just put it that way. And uh, they're able to do that. However, Kriv, one of these days, I mean, they're busy putting everything together. Layden's still free. Um, he comes up to you, Kriv. Uh, Layden comes up, uh, up to you and says, Hey, uh, Dad, could you meet me outside? Like, ten minutes? I'm going to go get Pops. He goes running upstairs to to the bedroom where the last you saw him, he was snoring in in uh, bed. Um, at for the past couple of nights, um, you could swear that while he was sleeping, um, he was crying. And. He, you hear him mumbling sometimes that he's he's sorry, he's sorry, so sorry, Layden. Um, and um, so if you go outside, wait for for Layden. Uh, a few minutes later, uh, coming out, you see see Krebus kind of stretching his wings. He's got his staff, which you've learned was the Warhammer, but he's converted it into a staff somehow. And, and he says, oh, you know, w w what's going on? It says, it says, well, Dad, Pops, you both forgot something, I bet, this year. And um, with the help of Lemon, I've set something up for you guys. Because I think you guys forgot your anniversary. Lot has been, it, it has been, I have been gone for a while. And that, yeah. So I want you guys to have a nice picnic. And, and Layden says, I'll take you. And he turns into his ancient dragon form. And he lays down to have you guys climb aboard. Rebus gets up, gets into a good position. Oh, well, wow. For some reason, I forgot how big you are, Layden. It says, it's all thanks to you, Pops. He, uh, he lifts into the air and starts soaring off into to the ocean, and he makes this kind of wide arc around Waterdeep to a, very, to a clearing... To a forest just outside of Waterdeep that you guys know very well as to be that place where you at when he asked about those places that you'd like to to hang out. You get to this clearing and he, and he lands uh, gently, and you see this beautiful picnic set up. Um, a little dragonborn girl Earl is like just just trying to make sure everything looks perfect and, and she's like just doing these like minute new details and, and she's she 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 looks up and says happy anniversary and she claps says, we're gonna leave you two alone to enjoy your anniversary we got plenty of cheese here and you see this big cheese wheel which already has like a, a big wedge cut out of it so you can kind of see it it's in this like just Perfect thing, and late uh, Krebus's eyes widen because oh, wow. this is his favorite cheese. <laughs> it says, "Okay, we'll leave you two alone." And she comes running over to Layden, who's still in his ancient dragon form, and she climbs on, and she she goes, "Let's go!" And they go flying off uh, back the way they came because they he basically was. He doesn't want to disturb the people of Waterdeep, so he's been kind of like going around. So he went the long way in order to get there. And you and Krebus can have a nice romantic picnic in one of your favorite spots for your anniversary. Yay. What is it? It's been four years now? How long has it been? 
Oh. Well, counting prime material plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't, won't, won't count. I wouldn't count that time. Um, I, I, I want to say it's been like five years. And you were just that. I, I didn't tell you this, but um, uh, a few years before that, um, you know, remember that time I uh, I came and like like bug you. You were kind of like moping and everything, uh, but still being your guard duty thing. And and why in the first years? No, no, this it, this was even before you were still in your mopey mood before I, I started thing. But I kind of like trying to. I thought you were super handsome, so I kind of bugged you. But then my friends dragged me away. Um, well, um, uh, a little bit after that, we ended up getting stuck in um, Aswin Dale, and we came across this place where where we could uh, scry on on people. And well, I, I, I asked about you, and. And uh, uh, there were some, like, I don't know if they were hookers or what they were. You were paying them. But, um, but there were some guys, guys there, too. But I, I, could, I just, like, focused on your face. And I was just, I fell in love, man. I love you, sir. Love you, Crib. Love you, too. And gives you... And he gives you a kiss. And that's where we'll leave it for tonight. Okay. Yay! Well, what was um, Sister going to for? Oh, yeah, we forgot about that. I forgot about that. What was Sister looking for? It's okay. Uh, actually, she's going to start by... Um, Jordan is going to ask, was there any uh, artifacts in the uh, the lair of the, the adult blue dragon? Oh, yeah, there probably would have been. Hold on. Let me get up that sheet. Yeah. Gotta get my spreadsheet. Actually, in, in, for uh, all intents and purposes, um, that layer doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, there you go. Teenage Dragon State. Besides... Uh, I'm going to say, uh, you found Danith's visor. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say it's a, like a couple of them. Um. You found a Warhammer. Uh, gravel Thrash. Or Gravel Thrash. Um, gravel Thrash. I don't have this marked. It sounds familiar, but um, Nodal la Aston Las. Sounds Italian. It's Elvish. Fragile. It stands for Moon Crescent Bow. It's a bow. Keithrick. Another artifact bow. I don't know. It might not be um, something I want. Not a lot. Uh, and a bloody end. Nope. But the the thing about Noda la la Alessa uh, Asalas is um, it can be used as a melee weapon. Nice. 
the the attack rolls and everything is the same as the range range, but it does basically would do slashing instead of piercing. My question is that why is the bloody end doesn't sound good. No bloody head is not. Good. It, it 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 is it is half and half. There's two good ones and two bad ones. Yeah. The groveled trash and the the others are bad ones. The Dan Danreth's visor, vis visor and the uh, elven unpronounceable one. No, da la athalas. What does the visor do? The Danreth's visor, which is in uh, Explorer's Guide to Wildmount, by the way. Um, and these will be considered awakened when, uh, dad advisor, uh, while wearing the goggles in their dormant state, you can see normally in darkness, both magical and non-magical to a distance of 60 feet. Additionally, you have advantage on intelligence investigation and wisdom perception checks that rely on sight. Uh, when it awakens, you see individual creatures and objects within 60 feet of you as if they were visible and you see, you can see into the ethereal Plain, ethereal creatures and objects appear ghostly and translucent. As a bonus action, you can speak a command word and use the goggles to see into and through solid matter. This vision, vision has a radius of 60 feet and lasts for one minute. To you, solid objects within this radius appear transparent. The vision can penetrate one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, and up to three feet of, feet of wood or dirt. Thicker substances block the vision as does a thin sheet of lead. Basically, x-ray goggles. As a bonus action, you can speak a command word to switch the goggles into spyglass mode. While in this mode, creatures and objects viewed through the goggles are magnified to twice their size. Speaking of command word again, reverts the goggles to their normal operation. So they're just like a every... Like, all-purpose... I was hoping to find one that would be good for... Warlock, because you know we've got like the rat. Like some of them were like very specific, like good for a class. Mm -hmm. Hoping something would pop up for a warlock. I don't think there really is one. Um. So I'm gonna look not specifically. Ideas. Okay. Um. I'm gonna look for uh, the sword of Tarun. You don't find it. They don't find it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna look. For hey, here's why: because you keep asking for it, and I'm just gonna say no. <laughs> Any manuals? Any manuals? Uh, hold on. Can you get a list of them? Well, there are six. One for each class. We've only had the charisma. Yeah. Uh, here we go. One exemplar of. Like every so. Okay, so. Eve. No, oh, let's do the thing again. Not doing whatever. Uh, roll me a d6. Yes. One. You got one. You find a, uh, the strength based one. So happy about that. It is five thousand gold. Yeah, I'm gonna pay it. Okay. Oh. Um, I suppose I should be doing something. It's a hundred and fifty thousand gold. <laughs> I need to make gold sinks. <laughs> you know, honestly, I mean, you could technically, right now, because of all your money, you could start the process of having your own estate. Like, you don't need the eyes of Io. You can have your own place, have your own servants. Um, and I'm going to mandate them for one mission that I'm going to pay graciously. What are, you, uh, what, are, what are you hiring Acquisitions Incorporated to acquire? I want them to find and give me all the artifacts that they can find from other worlds that have been brought to this one. They need to be, to be brought back. Uh, to their own world, but alone I cannot find them all. So, 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 uh, you know what they're called? Nope. This is gonna be an open mission. Yep. 
if you see an artifact? Uh, I mean, hold on one moment. And he uh, goes off to the side and pulls up a stone and, and starts speaking into it. And you see in the back, you see all the, you see that there's a, a kind of looks like a pod uh, of some sort. It's large. It looks like it has a room inside it. There's a door to it. All of a sudden, it sinks down into the ground, and you hear some uh, shuffling. And a pod comes up, and he goes into the room. About five minutes later, he comes out and says, uh, I just spoke with uh, uh, Mas Mr. Drawn. Um, he politely declines the offer, but he will keep watch out, out so that he can sell them himself. Thank you for bringing, thank you for bringing the, them to our attention. What I mean is, what I want to buy them. Well, you would have to be the highest bidder. We usually put these type of things up for auction. Oh. Okay. Uh, I apologize, but it's not a contract we can really take. Now you have to kill them. Yeah, I don't have a choice. Uh going to have to burn the whole place down. Well, that's if they find them. <laughs> um, How many do you guys have left? You have 20 left. Still 20 of them. Jesus. Um, How much does it cost to get them? That is... I think that's some for offline. <coughs> no, that's, that's fine, man. Yeah. So, uh, I think we got most of our business done anyway, so we'll end the stream uh, here. Would he have, um, or would they know where to get a peregrine mask? It gives a fly speed and um, uh, advantage on initiative. And it's attunement. No, we don't really have we don't really have any sources for peregrine masks. That's okay. I mean we run across them on occasion, but um uh, usually we end up keeping those. They become very, very useful for our agents. I get it. Um a storm girdle? Uh storm girdle is an artifact. <laughs> 